It's a cool day on the lakes of the Pacific Northwest as we ready for the Apple Cup rivalry. Bragging rights are on the line for the Cougars and Huskies coming up next. It's been a tough year for the Cougars and Huskies. Washington State is winless in the conference this season with four of those losses by three points. Meanwhile, Washington snapped a 14-game Pac-10 losing streak this past weekend versus Arizona. But you can throw out all the records and forget all the stats. This is a game for in-state bragging rights. It's the start of a Pac-10 triple hitter here on FSN. The 2005 Apple Cup coming up next. Welcome to Seattle, Washington, where the Cougars have painted the Space Needle. And over at Husky Stadium, the crowd is getting revved up for the kickoff. It's the 98th battle between the Washington State Cougars and the Washington Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is DeMarco Farr. He played in four Apple Cups, all four with the Washington Huskies. But you are determined today to split that apple right down the middle. I'm a fair and impartial judge. I even wore a red tie today. Well, well then let's, let's start with Washington State. This is a team who's had several tough losses this year, despite having the guy who leads the nation in rushing, Jerome Harrison. Yeah, when you talk about Pac-10 running backs, most people want to say Reggie Bush or Lendell White. Well, here's a guy that outrushed them all. He sports a 13-game, 100-yard rush streak. He's an amazing running back, almost 1,700 yards, 15 rushing touchdowns, very patient, shows a great burst, and I'm telling you, he's the best cutback runner in the nation. And on the Husky side, the coaches are saying they have to do more creative things to allow Standback, Sims, to make plays. And that's what you're going to have to do. I, Isaiah Standback is the best, or one of the best, runner-gunners in the nation today. You have to find ways to get him the football and get him in the open field. James Sims has really been the story this week for the Huskies. Last three weeks, his only three starts, 393 yards, three touchdowns. He's been a shot in the arm for the Huskies' offense. Let's now go to the third member of our broadcast team down in the field with Kara Capuano. Well, Steve, you mentioned right at the top of the broadcast that, yes, indeed, the Space Needle, the quintessential landmark in Husky country, is painted crimson this week. Why on earth is there a cougar flag flying on top of the needle? Fans earned the right to fly their colors and paint the top of the needle by winning the Space Needle Challenge. Washington State fans donated almost $98,000 over a two-week period, that about $30,000 more than the Husky fans collected. So Washington State flying their Apple Cup colors right in the middle of Husky country. It is exciting. The fans are fired up, Steve. And I will mention, like DeMarco, this is not Cougar Crimson that I'm wearing, everyone. It's more of a salmon. Let's send it back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. Kickoff is right around the corner for the 2005 Apple Cup. But first, after a quick timeout, we'll send you to the College Football Saturday studio with Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, and Billy Ray Smith. There's a chill in the air in the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures in the low 40s, but the sun beginning to break through for the Apple Cup game between Washington State and Washington. Now, the Huskies are coached by Tyrone Willingham in his first year. He was Pac-10 Coach of the Year in 1999 with Stanford. Has done a great job, and he is determined to bring the Huskies back to the elite level. And then there's Bill Lodova, 14 years assistant coach for Mike Price at Washington State. Great defensive line, and he is enjoying this one, but he wants his Cougars to get back onto the winning level. They've been in every game this year. Well, Washington won the toss, and they have elected to receive. So here we have the kickoff, and the Cougars will take it at the 20-yard line as the ball skids out of bounds. Tyrone Willingham wanted it first because they were prepared with their quarterback, Isaiah Stanback. He is the best athlete on the team. He's from Seattle Garfield High School. He's thrown for almost 2,000 yards this year and coming off his best game in a victory over Arizona, ran for 95 yards and two touchdowns last week. Stand back, we'll have James Sims behind him, number 22. He has a big physical offensive line that's led by Joe Toledo. He's back and healthy and made a difference last week in their win in Tucson. Sims will get the call in the carry, but he's stuffed by Aaron Johnson and also by Amu. 
Now the backs and receivers, James Sims, we told you about 445 yards rushing, but that offensive line is led by Joe Toledo, 6'6, 290. The offensive line averages over 300 pounds. Backs and receivers, there's Sims. Watch out for Sonny Shackelford, 37 catches this year, and Robert Lewis is a big tight end. Stand back now on second down, 11 yards to go. And he throws it out to Anthony Russo, and Russo is up near a first down, but knocked out of bounds near the 29. Now on the defensive side for Washington State, that front line, M. Christo Bruce is their tough guy. He has 10 sacks this year in the interior. It's Johnson and Amu, and Braidwood has five and a half sacks. Davis and Dildine, terrific outside linebackers. Dirting, though, is the best, but he's playing with a damaged knee. Dada, Frampton, Abdullah, and teams are the defensive backs. Third down and one. Sims hammers the middle. He appears to get the first down with that final surge forward, DeMarco. And the Huskies have done a great job on this drive. They mix it up, run and pass. They tried Sims early in the first play, get stuffed. They come right back with a quick out, get and stand back into the game. They get the first down with Sims again. You have to, if you're the Huskies, you have to sustain a drive. You have to get first downs. Keep that Cougar offense on the bench. And this offensive line has four seniors, but they have not been a power driving offensive line until the last three games. Stand back, play action pass. He flips it off to the right side, but he did have a receiver in the area. That was Russo, but stand back, obviously, just trying to get rid of it as he was pressured from the interior. Defensive tackle Aaron Johnson. Well, you talk about the keys to the game for WSU. Take advantage of the DBs when they get on offense. The Huskies are a little weak at corner. Take advantage of that with Jason Hill for Washington. Establish the run game and also limit the turnovers. That has been the death nail for the Huskies all year. You have to keep the possession when you're on offense. Stand back, second and ten. Not much. Matter of fact, they will lose two yards in the play. And it was Will Dirting, the middle linebacker, who is the senior. Scott Davis also helping out number 42, but there's Dirting from Okanagan, Washington. Well, you see the Huskies try to run the power play. You see the big tackle trying to come around and make a block. When Will Dirting says nothing, do and he reads the play in a hurry. Meets the back in the hole, and anytime you see the pull, if you can beat that offensive lineman to the hole, you're going to win every time. Will Dirty does a great job on that play. He's a tough player. Well, here's a situation where in the past Washington State likes to blitz a lot. Can you do that with stand back? Absolutely, you can blitz stand back. You just have to get to him quick. They rush four. Stand back will now run. And he comes up shy of a first down by about four yards. Tackle made by Eric Frampton, a strong safety. Well, they rushed four to get the stand back. They tried to run the twist game in the middle. The offensive line does a great job of picking it up. You see that big hole? That's what stand back sees. He has to take it, but hey, there's Will Dirty to make him cut. Brings him down short of the first down. Brandon Harvey is back deep. He's awaiting the punt from Sean Douglas. Douglas standing at his 21-yard line. Harvey's back near the 20 and uh, gets off a very short punt taken at the 31-yard line. There's a fair catch. And we'll take a look at Washington State's quarterback. There he is, Alex Brink. He's having a very fine year for just a sophomore. Over 2,600 yards passing and 22 touchdowns. His hometown, well, he's from Pac-10 country, only it's Oregon Duck country from Eugene Sheldon High School. He likely will go right away to Jerome Harrison, his running back. Although they have three receivers on the right side, now they send one in motion, and Chris Jordan, Harrison, about a five-yard gain up past the 35-yard line. This has been a very fine offense defensively where they had the problems and it starts up front. And on that offensive line, Milhauser is the best run blocker and pass blocker, but they are huge on that line and the backs and receivers. We told you about Harrison over 1600 yards rushing. Watch out for 83, Jason Hill, 57 catches, 
and 25 touchdowns the last two years. And the ball is dropped by Jason Hill. He had some challenges in that department last week in their last against Oregon. Defensively on the front. Mariaki, Afoa, Hopoi, Gunheim on that front side. Mariaki has three sacks this year. Bomar in for the injured Lobendine, White and Benjamin. Benjamin's great linebacker and a very young and uh, sometimes beaten defensive backfield. Brink with plenty of time. And he'll get the first down at the 45 yard line to Jason Hill. Washington State sticking right with the script. You come out early, you're running with Harrison, and then you go, and then you go right back to your money maker. Jason Hill beats man on man coverage. Anytime you can get him matched up one on one with a corner or the safety, look for Brink to go that way. He's a dynamic receiver. The Huskies gonna have to do a better job of bumping him at the line of scrimmage to dis disrupt his speed. From the 49 now, two receivers off to the left side. Washington blitzes and Harrison finds a seam and gets about another five, six yards. And early in the game, that's been the difference. Washington had two second and long. Meantime, State on their first possession has had two second and shorts. Absolutely. That's where you want to be if you're an offense. Third and shorts, second and shorts. You don't want to be third and long, especially when the Cougars are on defense. They'll come after you. The Huskies have a pretty good pass rush from their defensive line. But you want to be in third and shorts if you're an offense. Second down, play action, Brink steps up, he's in trouble, and he's sacked! They brought the blitz, Evan Benjamin, who's playing the best game of the year for the Huskies. He has been their defensive MVP. Yeah, they came with the zone blitz, which means Evan Benjamin is going to be unblocked. You watch him, the offensive lineman for Washington State, he sees it late, that's my man, he's already on my quarterback. That's what we call the lookout block. You say, hey, quarterback, look out, I missed. <laughs> he well, has been the man for the Huskies on defense. Well, he was the Pac-10 defensive player of the week for his performance against Arizona. Ten tackles, two and a half behind the line of scrimmage in one sack. He already has one sack in this game on the Cougars' first offensive possession. Third and nine for Alex Brink. First down, though, Jason Hill to the 30-yard line. Huskies rushing four, dropping seven. You watch the game to the right side. A little ET game. It gets split. That gives Brinks a nice window to throw to. And anytime he can get a full view of Jason Hill, he's going to hit that zone every time. He is dangerous when he's in the open field. You have to jam him. The Huskies are playing way off of him right now. You have to look, and they're going to switch up their coverage and go a little brass man if they're going to be successful. Brink shows running. Might be changing it here. No, he's going to go to Harrison, and they lead it well, and the interior sets him down. Gun high. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio for a Kiyosara game break with Mike Goldberg. Well, Fitz, for those of you who we took out of the Oklahoma... Thank you, Mike. Right now, Washington State looking for the... They're at the Husky 31-yard line. Second down, a long 10 and a half yards to go. Brink with a blitz. He's got somebody open. It's Jason Hill just beyond his reach. That was one of our keys to the game. Take advantage of the corners of the Huskies. Jason Hill matched one-on-one -on -one with Matthew Fontaine. You see the protection. They do a good job stopping Manasseh. Oh boy, the big defensive lineman from Washington. There's no pressure. You watch. He has him wide open. Just can't quite get it to him. Just out of reach. And that's when you say, Lord, just give me one more step. That's what Tyrone, that's what Jason Hill's thinking right now. If I had one more step, that'd be six. Now third down and long. Brink with the screen. Harrison finds the middle. He escapes and gets the first down and a brilliant move and then a late flag. Looks like we may have a hold out there on the third move. Trying to spring Harrison on the screen. That's the tough part with Harrison on the screen. He's not going to end up where he catches the ball. He's a great cutback runner, and sometimes you'll lose your guy, and when you're blocking somebody, you'll do anything you can to stop him from tackling your running back. 
illegal block in the back, number 86 offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still third down. And you gotta say that's that's on Harrison right there. I mean he's such an elusive back. You see on the screen, they set it up well. The Huskies buy into it. He makes one guy miss. He's cutting across field, makes another guy miss. Then he cuts back. He brings the defender into the receiver, into his own blocker, and that's just one you have to say, hey, uh, I tried hard, but I hit him in the back. Great run anyway. Well, they run it again. It looks like they're going to spread out that offense. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Jason Hill is in the slot. Blitz on. Brink with time. Going deep. Touchdown, Cougars! Greg Prater! Going right back at it. They saw they found a weakness. They're going right back at it. Throwing to the left side. Man for man coverage. Gets beat on the double move. Right to the corner of the end zone. Just the way you draw it up. Just the way you practice it. Touchdown Cougars. Boy, they really attacked. And twice on third and long, they came through and got a first down and then a touchdown. So it's 7 0 Washington State. Alex Brink with his 23rd touchdown pass of the year. A beautiful strike to Greg Prater from Riverside, California. Greg Prater with his second touchdown of the year. A beautiful pass on third and long from Alex Brink. And an excellent executed drive by Washington State. They have not had problems scoring touchdowns this year. They're fifth in the Pac-10 in scoring 35 points per game. They took just four minutes to score that touchdown. Well, you got to believe in the game plan. This has been a theme for the Huskies. The corner play has really been suspect. Here he gets matched up one-on-one -on -one with Okabor, and it's just a straight go route to the end zone. He just doesn't have the speed to pick up with it. And if you're the Cougars offensive side, you say, hey, if the weak point is the corners, I'm going to put four wides out there. So you're going to have four corners on the field. I'm going to beat you down the field every time. Bill Doba has to like that. Twice they came up big plays on third and long. And uh, right after the penalty that got them the first down, that brought them back to third and ten. Lewis will bring it back for Washington. And he's up to the 23-yard line where Standback will start his offense again. Our college football quadruple header continues after our game with 10th-ranked Oregon taking on Oregon State. And then 16th-ranked Fresno State looking to upset number one-ranked USC. Our college football coverage continues all day right here on FSN. And I'll tell you, Mike Bellotti might be coach of the year. The job he's done, losing Kellen Clemens. And they're, they could be 10 and 1 after today. They, they could be knocking and knock BCS door. I think they should be. Never count out the Civil War there. Always a war down. You got that right. Stand back, back to throw. Going deep. He has Russo out there, but over his head. That time it looked like the Cougars, the linebackers had stepped up into the line of scrimmage, faking blitz. Whenever you do that, you have to, that's your deception. You have to get back quick. Stanbeck sees it, finds the open man. You watch that quick gun straight down the middle. Just a little too long, but he has great protection up front. You see him, Cristo Bruce, coming around the corner. He beats Joe Toledo. That's the marquee matchup we're looking for. Bruce against Toledo. You have to say Bruce won that battle on that play. An offensive coordinator, Tim Lepano, going for it on first down, going deep. Here is Stanback running his option, muscles past the 30-yard line to the 31. You'll rarely see quarterbacks take on a defender like that, but earlier, Tim Lepano was telling us that he's a guy, a quarterback, you have to calm down. He's a very fiery competitor. Very emotional guy. His nickname is Zeus. Uh, he's just a chiseled guy, very athletic. Uh, you say it's rare when you see a quarterback run into the defenders and really take on guys. Well, you won't see a quarterback like Isaiah Sandback. He's truly special. Tyrone Willingham told us he's the best athlete on the team at the age of 13. He was clocked throwing the fastball at 85 miles an hour. 
Now they'll run Sims and Sims dives forward. He gets the first down to the 35 yard line. Let's go down to the sideline to Kara Capuano. Guys, I just wanted to add a little bit more to the nickname story on Isaiah Stanback. His high school teammates named him Zeus because he used to throw lightning bolts down the field. We mentioned his arm. We saw it last week in Arizona. We'll see if Zeus airs out now that they've got the first down. Steve? Lightning bolts. I thought it was because of his body. <laughs> lightning bolts. I get it now. Zeus. He's a Greek god playing in the Pacific Northwest. And here's that Brazzle Dazzle. They're going to go deep. Shackleford. He makes the catch. And Sonny is gone. Kenny James with the touchdown toss. It's the halfback pass. You watch Kenny James does a great job. He looks like Isaiah Stanback. You find it. It's three deep back there. Washington State has the play covered. Sonny Shackelford just comes up with a, a big play. He can go up and get the football. The Huskies pulling out the bag of tricks early. But it's not like they fooled him throwing into three defensive, defensive men. What a start to this one. 7-7, seven, seven. Tyrone Willingham. Going with the razzle-dazzle early. James to Shackelford for the touchdown. Sonny Shackelford is all smiles. 65-yard catch for a touchdown tying this game at 7-all. 98th meeting between Washington and Washington State. 77-yard drive in just four plays. 138 off the clock. Coach Willingham would like to see more of that. Get, it, get points any way you can, pulling out all the tricks. You may see more before the game's over. Short kick. Percy will take it past the 20-yard line. Now down at the 23. Now here's the touchdown here. It's a halfback pass. It's designed to beat this corner right here. He's supposed to come up and defend the run. But you watch Wazoo. They don't buy it. The corner drops out. Now watch the adjustment he makes going across the field. And it's just a great pass. Three defenders in the area. In the area. Sonny Shackelford just goes up and gets the football and says, hey, this is my game. It's my Apple Cup. I want the touchdown. He beats three defenders. These rivalry games always are exciting, even when you've got two teams with losing records. Harrison again knocked down. Well, we could see a lot of points because we have two deep defenses that give up the most points in the Pac-10 conference. The Huskies give up 31 points per game. The Cougars the most at 32 and a half points per game. There is Alex Brink. Completed a touchdown on third and long to start their first offensive possession. This is their second possession. Brink will have Harrison as the lone setback on second down, 11 yards to go now. Harrison just eight yards on four carries. Brink swings it out to Harrison, makes the defender miss. And it's one on one. Harrison against Wallace, and uh, he was able to beat him. Right to the teeth of the zone blitz. You see him coming off the corner. Now, this is what you want if you're the Huskies. You want to make Brink throw it where you want him to throw it. You get Harrison out in the corner. But this is where he's dangerous. He can make any one man miss. You're going to have to have more than one guy out there. Good blitz by the Huskies. Even better read by the Cougars. Third down and three. Jordan goes motion. They swing it to Hill, and Hill diving forward. Let's see where the mark is. It's at the 34-yard line. They needed to get to the 33 for a first down, so he just does get it. But Jason upset with himself because he slipped and could have had five more there for the play. Evan Benjamin, the six-foot senior from Redmond, Washington, having a heck of a year. We're going to call his name out a lot, Evan Benjamin, but on the receiver screen with as far off as the Huskies are playing, trying to respect Jason Hill's 
speed, it leaves yourself open underneath from the screen, and the Cougars doing a great job of getting the first down. Brink going deep, looking for Prater, and it is incomplete, but there's a flag down. They had Deshaun Goldson having to take the slot receiver who's a safety on a wideout. Well, that's what happens when Washington State keeps switching in and out. They go back from regular to four wides. The Huskies get caught with a linebacker on, a receiver tries to take advantage of it. You see the little bump right there. And anytime you impede that receiver's ability to catch the football, that little yellow flag is going to come out. I like aggressive defense. I also like when you have to call it fair, and that was a pass interference. Mike Levenseller, who's the offensive coordinator for Bill Doba in Washington State, he said the Washington corners are very aggressive. Very. What was he intimating? That they can get beat deep. Okay. That was a nice way of saying we can go around them. Well, they went deep once for the touchdown, and Greg Prater. Now they'll go Harrison's way, and Harrison off the right side for about three. Tackle by Taj Bomar, the middle linebacker is in replacing Joe Lowendine. How about that? Texas Whoa. Tech beating Oklahoma 23-21 on the final play of the game. Wow. Texas Tech, one of the surprise teams. Oklahoma, even bigger surprise. We thought they'd be playing for the national championship. We thought Adrian Peterson would now, run away with the Heisman. Now, it's when you tough. say we, you mean you. We. We in the nation. <laughs> when the season began, I thought Texas was better than Oklahoma. And you and I have seen USC a lot. Oh, yeah. Here is Brink. Almost. It is caught by Jordan. I thought it was going to be intercepted, but it was tipped right into the hands of Chris Jordan for a first down for the Cougars. Just a heartbreak of a play for C.J. Wallace. He does a great job. Looks like he just mistimes his jump. But this is what Brink does so well, or what he has been doing well as of late. Moving in the pocket, buying himself some time. Throws the pass. C.J. Wallace has a beat on it. Mistimes his jump. Great job coming down with the football, Chris Jordan. Keeps the drive alive. That's one you got to have if you're the Huskies defense. You need those big plays. Instead of a first down for the Huskies, it's a first down for the Cougars in the red zone now at the 22-yard line. And there is C.J. Wallace, who is second on the team in tackles, but still does not have an interception this year. And that was the big key last year. The Huskies, their quarterbacks were picked off three times. Brink was not intercepted, and he led his team to a victory last year. Cougars broke a six-game losing streak to the Huskies to post a 28-25 win. And you watch, he's in the air. You see C.J. Wallace coming over. Does he have it? I think he has it. That's good in the NFL, two feet in. Definitely good for college. We've got a timeout on the field. Tied at seven, Tyrone Willingham against Bill Dova and the Apple Cup in Seattle. Crowd on their feet here at Husky Stadium. Alex Brink back to throw. Seven for 11 in the first half. Scrambling away past the 20, past the 15. First down, Cougars inside the 10 yard line. Last night in our production meetings, we talked about Alex Brink and his running ability. You see the game up front. Now watch it just open up. There's no middle linebacker with four wide receivers in the middle. He's going to have to turn his back and pick up the inside receiver. Every time Alex Frank sees that, he's going to take it up the middle. Gains big yards in the red zone for the Cougs. Frank play action again, firing left. Off the hands of Cody Boyd, incomplete. Remember, starting tight end Troy Bieneman injured out for the rest of the year. And Boyd stepping up. He's a big target at 6'8". That, that was a mismatch. That was a tight end on a defensive end. That's Grayson Gunheim covering the, the tight end in the end zone. It's a zone blitz, which means the end has to pick up a cover. Alex Brink doing a great job. The Cougar offense doing a great job of picking up the mismatches just out of reach. I'm not sure if Gunheim just got a finger on to deflect it just a tad. Harrison, nothing, and he will be dropped for a yard loss. So Jason Harrison now just 
Six carries in the game for 10 yards. And that's what you have to do if you're the Huskies defensive line. You have to get upfield and disrupt blocking assignments. But NASA, oh boy, having a tough year. Talk to Coach Willingham about it. He says he's frustrated, which means he's being double teamed, but he can still be a disruptive force without making plays. There he does it, disrupts it. Makes Harrison cut back in the backfield. It's another third and long. Last time they had a third and long inside the red zone, they scored a touchdown to Prater. Brink loops it to the right. Catch is made. They deny the touchdown as they go to their tight end. Quick out, trying to catch the man on man with the outside linebacker, a strong safety. You got to throw that pass on time so the tight end has a chance to turn it upfield and actually take on the defender. You watch Brank gets to his drop, pump fakes, throws it. Now watch the defender. He gets to the, the ball carrier before he has a chance to turn upfield. That's how they teach it in practice. Save yourself a touchdown. Hold it to three points if you can. So ben Werder, after a five-yard gain, is the backup tight end. Now the field goal attempt. It is up, and it is good by Lauren Langley. Washington State after taking a 10-7 lead kicks off and the Huskies make a big mistake as they decide to bring the ball out of the end zone and it was almost Roy Lewis doing a little double take in the end zone should I or should I not and I'm sure Tyron Willingham oh he's going to tell you, you know, if you hesitate go to one knee right it will never happen again trust me with that man coaching that will never happen again that's a learning lesson right there for the return man. And that guy is all about attention to detail. Tyrone Willingham. They've got stand back out at wide receiver, and the quarterback is Casey Paws, who throws in the football, and Isaiah with the catch, but a very short game. Now, stand back played wide receiver his first two years for the Huskies, then moved back to the position he wanted to play, where he's successful in high school at Garfield, the quarterback spot. So Paws now will stay in. Well, it's an interesting situation. Your best athlete on the field happens to be the quarterback. Well, if you want to get the ball to your best athlete, you're going to have to bring in the backup quarterback. We're going to see this a lot. Pause goes to the sideline. Stand back, back in as the QB. And he'll flip it to the right. And reading it beautifully is the defense led by Wally Dada. Well, the Huskies come out and run the exact same play just to the other side trying to catch Washington State in the blitz, trying to catch him in a man-on-man -man situation. Washington State doing a great job of disguising their blitzes, disguising their coverages. The corners look like they're going to back off. They stay up. It's going to be tough to fool them. If you're the Huskies, you're just going to have to take a shot deep to get some respect from these corners. Third and 12. Shackelford scored the touchdown wide left. Stand back. Looking to escape, in trouble, throws it away. Will Dirty came on a blitz and just destroyed the running back. And it looked like he just scared Isaiah Standback. He didn't know what to do. His running back got crushed right in front of him. Well, look at Rob Akey. Oh, excited. Fired up. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the former defensive coordinator, now the head coach, Bill Doba. He's excited and proud of the way the Cougars Set up that play. We'd like to welcome those of you who are watching Big 12 football, Oklahoma against Texas Tech. What a game there. The Red Raiders win. We are live from Husky Stadium in Seattle along with DeMarco Farr and Kara Capuano. I'm Steve Fiziak. Here is Trandon Harvey fumbling it, picking it back up, but apparently they are marking him down at the 36-yard line. Washington and Washington State have been playing football since 1900. This is the 98th meeting. The Huskies with 63 wins. The Cougars with 28 against six ties. And in the first quarter, here is how they've scored. Alex Brink on third and long. Went to Jason Hill once for a first down. And then to Greg Prater for the touchdown. Stand back. He can run. 
He can also razzle dazzle you and he gets it to Kenny James who throws it 65 yards to Sonny Shackelford to tie the game at seven. A field goal made it 10 7 and now the Cougars going and Harrison breaking free. He is past the 40 to the 41 instead of second and long. It will be second and about five. Well, he Final was, seconds of the first quarter DeMarco. He was wrapped up in the backfield but this is why he's leading the nation in rushing. He just has a knack for shaking off defenders. Averaging almost 170 yards per game. Well here by the lake in Seattle Washington. It's 10 7 Cougars over the Huskies in the 98th meeting between these two schools. It's been a tough year for Tyrone Willingham and Bill Doba. Washington is two and eight, one and six in conference play. Washington State three and seven and looking for their first conference win. They have a 10 7 lead here from the 41. It is Harrison, only 15 yards on seven carries prior to this run, and he gets about three, four yards. It'll be third down and short. You see the zone blocking by the Washington State Cougars. Sometimes they'll pull guys, other times they'll just go straight zone. They're going to try to cut the backside in and get up to the second level. They have a pretty good offensive line. You mentioned Nick Milhauser, one of the better centers in the Pac-10. Calls out all the protections, a really smart guy, a position blocker. You see him right there in the middle of your screen. He's the primary blocker for Alex Brink. They need to get to the 46 for a first down. Harrison gets it. Slips away and look at this instead of one he's got the first down and hold down inside the 25. This is why he's so dangerous. It's going to take more than one guy to bring him down. You watch it up front zone blocking all the way. You see they cut the backside in. And the safety who comes down and has to fill, he has to keep his feet. But against Harrison, it's going to be tough. He's a jitterbug type running back. You watch him make his moves. He's setting you up three moves ahead. He's an excellent running back. Great burst when he hits the hole. Oh. Tremendous weapon for the Cougars. Let's see if Brink goes back to him. No play action pass. And Brink will step up and be dropped for a two yard loss. But with that last run, Jerome Harrison moves into fifth place. Washington State career rushing history with 2,619 yards. We're going to play fake. Now you watch. Alex Brink sees it. Four wides again. I tell you what, if Manasseh Hopeboy doesn't make this play, Brink is still running. He may bounce his head off the goalpost. It was wide open in the middle. Manasseh coming over, making a great play. Second down, 12 yards to go. Boy, they faked him all out that time except one man, and that's Hope Boy chasing him. And the pass is thrown, and the catch is made inside the 20 yard line at the 18. And some complaints coming from the Husky side because they thought the man was out of bounds. A little bit of a tap dance here on the sideline. You love to play. We call this the submarine play. Everybody goes one direction, the tight end slips around. Great job by the Huskies picking it up. But then you see it. I don't know. I don't know if he That's came back ball. in from out of bounds. If he was out of bounds and came back in. Harvey did have one in bounds, but watch as he's approaching the football. That's a tough play to defense because everything in your read says run to the right, except for one guy, the tight end coming underneath. That's why they call it a submarine, and usually. He's wide open. Great job by the Husky defense picking it up, making Brink have to go to a second option, which is the sideline route. Throws a great pass. We just don't know if he was inbounds or not. Yeah, let's go back and take a look at it because it looked like Harvey was out of bounds with one foot and came back in. Throw by Brink. You watch. Right there. Right there. That's a tough call by the officials. He's got to watch the hands, then the feet. The back judge was covered by the defender, so it's left up to one official. Everybody likes to complain to officials about, hey, you missed that call, but I always say the same thing. What would you do if you were down there? 
Tamarka, you're absolutely right, but I'm sure Tyrone Willingham has to be impressed with Mr. Brink. This guy's a sophomore quarterback. He's 9 for 12, 123 yards, and he has the best passing rating as a sophomore at Washington State than any sophomore quarterback with over 60 pass attempts. 139.2. I mean, that's better than Jack Thompson, Jason Gesser, Drew Bledsoe, Ryan Leaf, Tim Rosenbach. Alex Brinks is going to have a heck of a career in Pullman. That's an impressive list of quarterbacks. Jack Thompson to throw in some more, and you got Mark Rippon, who's at the top. Drew Bledsoe, Ryan Leaf, second pick in the draft. And here's this guy, better than all of them by his sophomore year. And he led the Cougars to that 28-25 victory last year. Alex Brink threw for two touchdowns. He also ran for one. And they held off the Huskies rally late because Stanback came off the bench and almost pulled the upset. Cougars won, no, 28-25. And both of these schools have great quarterback traditions. Look at the Cougars with Bledsoe, Thompson, Leaf, Gesser, Rippon, Goddard, Rosenbach. Is Brink that next big guy? Well, he came into this game just 392 yards shy of becoming the fourth Cougar with over 3,000 yards passing. Leaf did it. Rosenbaugh did it. Gesser did it. Well, remember, I was out here when Drew Bledsoe made his debut, and uh, we talked about it earlier. Watching the way he released the football, he was going to be something special. Well, they will change the call, saying the wide receiver was out of bounds, so a big roar of approval here in Seattle. And Tyrone Willingham likes that, so instead of a first down, it will be a third down and 12 situation for the Cougars. It looked like the right call. That's what we had up here. Now, if you're the Huskies, you try to get pressure with four, you tried the pass rush games, and Alex Brink has just picked you apart running the ball. You have to say with third and long, maybe you could gamble that you'd bring him down before he gets the first down, but I look for the Huskies as a blitz here. Well, it might be from Evan Benjamin's side, number 27. He has three sacks this year. Evan up on the right side. And here he comes. And they forced the sack. Brink saw Benjamin streaking in from the right side. Well, if you're the Cougars, you say we're going to take advantage of the corners. But if you're the Huskies, we're going to blitz. So you don't have time to, to catch a read. You see Benjamin coming. He beats the block of Harrison. Makes Brink have to step up. And then the rest of his buddies just show up. Wilson of Fall getting there. Great play by the Huskies. Great call by the Husky coaching staff. So a 50-yard field goal attempt by Lauren Langley. It would have been about 40, but the Husky defense prevails, and this one will be wide to the left side and short. It stays. Cougars 10, Husky 7. Benjamin's defense steps up. FSN, where Northwest fans come first. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera, the new value frontier. And brought to you in part by Verizon Wireless. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And by KFC's $4 meals, all the quality of a casual dining meal at half the price. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Here in Seattle, Washington has the football, giving it to James Sims, who's been really held down after coming off a 200-yard rushing performance last week at Arizona, only with five yards on five carries on this one. Let's send you to our College Football Saturday studio for a Kiyosera game break with Mike Goldberg. CC West. Back here, Mike, on second down and eight. Stand back, sneaking forward, and right now, You've got to credit the Cougars. They knew the two guys they had to slow down were Standback and Sims, and they've controlled both in this game. Yeah, great job by the Cougar defensive line, controlling Sims, really controlling the blocks up front. But as far as, as controlling Standback, you can do that with the blitz. Anytime he sees more than four rushing, 
He's a threat to pull it down, and that time looked like he may have missed a hole right to his left, but does a great job of finding yards on enough. 94 M. Cristo Bruce in the eyes of Isaiah Stanback. Stanback rolling to his right side, flips over the head of Sonny Shackelford, incomplete fourth down punting situation. That's what we talked about. The intermediate routes for Stanback. He's got a hit. He had Shackelford wide open, and he just overthrew him, threw it over his head. May have thrown off balance. That's one thing you talked about, the emotional state of Isaiah Stanbeck. Maybe a little too excited, puts a little too much mustard on the football. Brandon Harvey back, standing at his 12-yard line. Sean Douglas, number 17. Douglas really hammers this one inside the five-yard line, and it dies at the three and is touched at the seven-yard line. An outstanding punt by Sean Douglas. So the Cougars will have 93 yards to go when we come back. Cougars by three, but DeMarco Farr, how many teams have quarterbacks in their punt team? Not many. Here's Casey Paws right here. Lines up under center as the quarterback. Now watch him. He'll drop back. Now watch the ship. He's over here. Now watch the receivers. There's two over here. He's an eligible guy trying to catch the Cougars off guard. Just a little wrinkle by the Huskies. Testing the Cougar defense's discipline. Cougars doing a great job of recognizing getting out of it. Well, Douglas' 54-yard punt pins the Cougars back, but here goes Harrison near the 10-yard line where he gains three. Fine tackle by Evan Benjamin. Harrison really held down. He had the one long run. He has 54 yards total now on 10 carries. Just caught him by a hair. Sometimes you just get that shoestring and down they go. Harrison... One of the most dangerous men on the planet. Set the Pac-10 record last week with his 13th consecutive 100-yard game. The old record, J.J. Harrington of California with his 12. And here goes Harrison. Well, he, it's not going to be long before he has another 100-yard game in just the first half. Well, this is his running style. It looks like he stopped. The Husky defenders may relax a little bit, and then boom, he's through the hole. There goes Benjamin again coming with the zone blitz. Husky's doing a great job of stacking it up, but one thing they forgot to do was tackle the ball carrier. Out goes Harrison, gains the first down. Look at that hole. Just blows the side away. When you're playing against a guy like Harrison, it's the Barry Sanders rule. you got to get 11 guys around him at all times to bring him down. He is such a patient runner, waiting for the holes to open up. And here goes Harrison again. This time he is stuck by a four and Hope Boy and the middle linebacker, Bomar. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. Overstock. That's like my pantry in my kitchen. Overstocked with <laughs> junk food. <laughs> you got to stop that, too. <laughs> Got to turn you on to the good life of carriage. I love hot dogs. <laughs> I noticed. We ate a couple of husky dogs up here in the media room earlier. It's second down and nine yards to go. Brink back. He's got great protection now. It arose as the DBs do their job. And Brink is sacked at the 12-yard line. What a play by Grayson Gunheim with his fifth sack this year. Great job by Grayson. The great gun, his teammates call him. But you got to put this one square on the shoulders of Alex Brink. Great protection. January, February, March. He's got all day. And then he runs and tries to break contain. Not against a guy like Gunheim. He can run. He's a defensive end only by position. He has the speed of a linebacker. Not many quarterbacks are going to outrun Grayson Gunheim to the corner. Great job by the big sophomore. He had seven starts as a true freshman last year. Looks like he can put on another 25 pounds. You are absolutely right. Washington showing blitz from Whiteside. Now he drops back just a four-man rush. Brink will run, but he will be uh, shy of the first down by about four or five yards. That time the Huskies had a spy 
Linebacker Scott White hanging in the zone. You see Scott White there, top of your screen. He's copying, that's what you call copying the quarterback, making sure he doesn't scramble. Always putting the body on him. Brink doing a great job of trying to get the first down, just not enough. So now Kyle Bosler, one of the top punters in the Pac-10. In his career, he averages 42 and a half yards per boot. And uh, Shackelford with the catch, and he is tackled at the 36-yard line. I thought he would fair catch, but he decides not to. And when we return, we'll send you to our studio for an update. FSN Live Rivalry Day presented by your Northwest Chevy dealers, Mark Rippon on the Cougars. Well, with the ninth and 10th ranked defenses respectively, you'd expect a lot of offense, not enough scoring for the Cougs though. Sunday, six killer on the Huskies. I'll tell you what, the Husky offense is not on track. One great play is it. We'll hash it out at halftime right here at Husky Stadium in Seattle. Four teams, two games, one network. Remember the Civil War follows. We've got it all covered for you today on FSN Live. Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith getting set for the college football Saturday halftime report. Hey, I'll tell you why USC must have a dominant performance against Fresno State today. And I'll tell you why you better get your sandwich and soda pop before the Trojans and Bulldogs get after it. It's going to be a 60-minute game. And I'll tell you this, DeMarco, Kellen didn't wear an orange sport coat today. <laughs> Isaiah stand back with a first down toss to wide receiver Cody Ellis. What a job by Zeus, buying time with a rush in his face, moving, moving to his left, throws a strike, but it's going to come back. And those are the things that Tyron Willingham doesn't like to see because he wants to clean up the penalties, clean up the turnovers. They say the offensive player pushed off. 15-yard penalty. I'm not sure about that one. I thought it was going to be a face guarding penalty by the linebacker. You watch Dan Beck moving to his left, throws a wobbler. Look at the defender. Comes up, puts both hands in the air like Superman. Looks like both guys were guilty. One did push off, but as you said, unless you have your head turned towards the quarterback, it's supposed, you can't to, be an just... it's supposed to be an automatic call when, when your head's not turned, but that might be one you want to pick up. So now first and 25 for stand back in the Huskies and they have not run the ball well just six yards and five rushes by James Sims and stand back back stepping up now he will run great speed to the outside and he gets out of bounds near the 35 yard line so he gains about 14 back he has tremendous speed he was in the Husky track team last year runs a six eight nine in the 60 meters. And you get a look at his speed right here. See if Christo Bruce going up around the corner. That's called a vertical hole by the defensive line. You leave your nose tackle on the line of scrimmage. The defensive end goes up beyond the quarterback against the quarterback like Isaiah Standback. He's going to take it every time. He's going to rush for as many yards as you give him. And Christo Bruce has got to come back on a wide rush like that. Got to catch his breath here. Second down, 11 to go. Boy, they have completely stifled James Sims. Sims came in 393 yards rushing his last three games including a 200 yard performance wow. in the desert Tucson Arizona last week. Well he's not a secret anymore. Scott Davis doing a great job on the blitz. The defensive line for the Cougars doing a great job taking up bodies frees up their linebacker. He gets in the backfield makes it before James Sims has a chance to turn north and south. Let's see if Rob Akey calls for the blitz. He's right now showing a rush. Will Dirting will blitz. Stand back with time. Down the middle. Shackleford. First down. 38-yard line. As you said, the Cougars coming with the blitz. They try the mic twist, which means both linebackers are going to cross in front of the center's face, hope for a pick. The Huskies doing a great job of picking up the blitz. Watch the Mike linebackers come through. Great pickup by the running backs. Isaiah Stanbeck realizing he has a mismatch in the 6-2 Shackleford. 
goes up and gets the football. Alex Teams, 5'11", a good corner in his own right. Shackford just outbodies him for the football. So Standback marches him down after being pinned back because of the penalty. First and 25, he gets it. And now he'll roll to the right side. Braidwood chasing him, and Standback will maybe gain one. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio for a Kyocera game break with Mike Goldberg. Ohio State will be nine and two. Wow. Wow. From and, the depths. And I think uh, they're five and one against Michigan the, wow. again, the wow. last six years. Where would they be if Troy Smith started the season against Texas? Good point. Gain of two, second down and eight for Standback. And the officials will stop play. Isaiah Standback. It was the major concern for Bill Dova. Delay of game. It is our lead referee, Larry Farina. USC right at the top with Texas. Both teams unbeaten. Miami now moving to the three spot. LSU playing better after a big win against Alabama last week. But the one team with another one loss, Oregon. Oregon. They could be 10 and 1 after if they beat Oregon State. And you can watch that game later today. Part of our triple header from the Pac-10. Oregon State and Oregon, and then USC hosting Fresno State. Stand back. Ooh, dangerous pass. Incomplete. Huskies wanted pass interference, but don't get it. That might be one you want back if you're Isaiah Stanback. The Huskies coming out in the triples formation. Three wide receivers lined up to the left side of Stanback. Pulls it down, and now it becomes a free-for-all. The receiver's trying to get open. Stanback kind of throws a little too soon. Throws it to the inside shoulder of the receiver. Clean pass defense by Dildine, doing a great job of stopping the improvisation by Stanback. Third and 13. Blitz on. Screen over the head of his intended receiver, Craig Chambers, who was wide open, would have gotten the first down or at least put his team in field goal range. It's hard to out throw a guy or overthrow a guy that's six foot three. They're coming again with the blitz. You watch the pickup. The guard misses his man. He's in the face of Standback, but I think he should have had this one right between his, right through his hands. Another missed opportunity for the Huskies. So right now the Huskies have had one big play and it was on a razzle dazzle play halfback pass to Sonny Shackleford for 65 yards but outside that the Cougars defense has done a much better job and there's a fair catch by Harvey at the 10 yard line. Our Pac-10 players of the week. Wow. Evan Benjamin tremendous game in Washington's win over Arizona and Olsen what a game against ASU five touchdown passes over 500 yards passing and Paul Martinez game winning field goal in Pullman last week and how many tough losses has Washington State suffered uh, well, five of their seven losses to Marco have been by four points or less playing good football just can't finish at the end of games that was one of our keys to victory you got to finish. And Bill Dova said, hey, we've had big plays, but they haven't been at critical times. Harrison escaping outside. He gains about five. So Jason Harrison now with, or Jerome Harrison, excuse me, 75 yards rushing, just 25 yards shy of his 14th straight 100-yard game. Par for the course for Harrison. He is the perfect back for this offense. A one-back attack, lots of speed, lots of cutback ability. Gets to the open field better than anyone that we've seen in the Pac-10. He broke Reuben May's single season rushing record last week. Now over 1,700 yards rushing. Rick fires, first down, Cody Boyd to the 33-yard line. There's your mismatch again. The Huskies doing the, the zone blitz package. You see Grayson Gunheim, he has the tight end. It's deception. You put his hand on the ground, you make the quarterback think he's coming, and then he drops late 
to pick up the tight end, but, but any good tight end like Cody, Cody Boyd, he's just going to run right by that defensive end, put his hand up and say, hey, hit me, I'm wide open. Brink overthrows his man, Greg Prater, who uh, scored the only touchdown for Washington State on their first drive. Alex Brink having a solid game, though. He's 9 for 14 for 134 yards and the touchdown. Threw for two scores at 240 yards in their win last year in Pullman to beat the Huskies. It's cold over there in Pullman. Trust me, I know. This time of the year, always. And you wore that, what? Cut jersey in the snow. Are you out of your mind? Here goes Harrison. He's got the first down. And Jerome to midfield and pass to the 46 yard line. Watch the patience on this run. He's so smooth going around the corner. You watch the block here. Down block, down block. Watch the seal here. Bang. Gets it down. He cuts it outside of his block and just scoots on down the field. That's the power game of this one back offense. They pull guys around, you get a mismatch, O lineman on a safety, and there goes Harrison. There's a penalty flag down and the handoff up the middle. Not sure if Washington was pulled off by the Cougar front line that may have jumped. You know, going back to the half shirt, that was the last time I could wear a half shirt. You know, I put on 20 pounds after I left school and it all settled in my belly. <laughs> it will go against the Huskies. So that will make it a first down and five. And Tyrone Willingham right now down by three points. In a marvelous win at Arizona last week. That is the fourth penalty against the Huskies. Washington State only with one. When we asked Coach Tyrone Willingham, was the Arizona game the turning point for the Huskies? Is this going to be the, is that going to be the game that turns the the program around he said well one game's not going to be enough we have to get two then three we have to get on a roll so it's going to be hard to bring a smile to that man's face he is usually the same stoic look on the sideline whether it's a, an interception or a touchdown brink plenty of time tosses gets the first down the, the catch was made at the 35 yard line they needed to get to the 36 for the first down and it will be a first down as Brink continues his success against the Washington defense. Well, the Huskies going to a combo coverage on Hill, a safety and a corner, keeping the corner Matt Fontaine over the top and putting C.J. Wallace underneath. Hill doing a great job of shaking off the underneath defender, getting open for the first down. And because they're picking up such solid yardage on passes and now runs, makes Jerome Harrison even more dangerous. Harrison 95 yards rushing on 14 carries in just the first half. Harrison the hole was there for a moment and then he made the rest in his own a gain of about four yards so he's at 99 yards. And there's Taj Bomar the middle linebacker getting into the play stepping in for the injured Joe Lobendon and what a statement coach Tyrone Willingham made about Joe Lobendon if he could clone one guy on the team, it would be Joe Lobendon. They really miss it, his experience, his intensity on the field. He has never played in an Apple Cup. Brink pumps one, now goes deep down the sideline, and this time well covered by the Husky secondary led by Deshaun Goldson. There's the Huskies making the adjustment on Hill. The first quarter, we've seen a lot of receivers going right by the Husky corners. Now they're getting into more of the zone with the combo coverage. You watch Brink, drops back to pass, three-step drop, pump fakes, it doesn't work. Two defenders out there, one short, one high. Maybe got away with a little push off Hill. Great job of the Huskies making the adjustment, coming out and stuffing the, the deep ball for the Cougars. Well, they bring in the nickel and dime defensive backs, but there's Evan Benjamin, bottom of your screen in the purple. He looks like he's gonna be blitzing. Yes, he does. Brink, quick toss over the middle to Boyd, who is wide open. The pass behind, and Cody cannot hold on. It's fourth and six. Huskies caught off guard, and they weren't ready on the snap of the football. They leave Boyd uncovered. He puts it in the vicinity. Boyd's got to come down with that. 
If he does, it's a touchdown. But the pass behind. Now a field goal attempt by Langley of 48 yards. Missed one from 51 earlier. It is up long enough, but why? It is good. It is good, and Washington State goes up 6 13 to 7 over the Huskies. Washington State, Alex Brink leading his team to 13 first half points. He had a tremendous play at the end of the half last week against Oregon with a Hail Mary pass that was successful for a touchdown. Well, now Washington has it. And they are at their own 26 yard line. So Brink takes him 58 yards at 252. Langley fires it through. Now Stanback has to come through with his own heroics. He is just three for nine for 37 yards in the first half. They go straight to the air. They have had not much success on the ground. And he completes the pass to Sonny Shackelford, who has had a very good first half, over 100 yards now receiving. He had the 65 yard catch on the halfback pass from Kenny James. 65 and the score. Well, you know the Huskies are going to come out gunning. So you look at the marquee matchup: Joe Toledo versus M. Cristo Bruce. M. Cristo Bruce coming inside, giving a, a window for Isaiah Stanbeck to throw to Shackelford. If you're the pass rush for the Cougars, you have to maintain your pass rush integrity and keep them in the pocket. Blitz coming. Stanbeck stepping up. I have no idea how he was able to uh, throw that pass with three guys dragging him down. He looked like old Los Angeles Ram Roman Gabriel. Wow. Wow. I like that. Watch. Stanbeck drops back the pass. They missed the blitz, but still he's strong enough to get the pass off, and that's what he brings to an offense. He's a tremendous athlete, very strong. Just when you think you got him, you don't got him. And last week it was Stanbeck who went to the sideline. And on a fourth down instead of punting, he convinced his coach to go for it. And they beat Arizona. And they scored on a marvelous play to end the half. 70 yards in the air. Stand back. Talk Coach Willingham into letting him throw it as far as he could. And it resulted in a touchdown. And Washington went on to beat Arizona 38 to 14. And there are a lot of people here in Husky territory that are hoping that was maybe a moment that spurs the yeah. team on yeah. because if they win two in a row it helps recruiting it helps offseason conditioning everything well that's what they count in football when you go back and look at when you count win streaks you go back to when you started it could be the last four it could be the last two and it carries over in the spring it carries over into the next training camp and on to the season so a win is a win and you move on with it but right now it's the Cougars by six Stand back with 117 and that last pass he was able to gain three instead of lose about five. And there is Tyrone Willingham. He was Pac-10 coach of the year leading Stanford to great success in 1999. They won the Pac-10 and sent the Cardinal to the first Rose Bowl since 1972. I was a year old. <laughs> and Christo Bruce. Watch that guy on the outside. He's a big playmaker, and it's big play time here, third and one. Washington could run the option, and they will, but the Cougars read it, and they drop stand back for a five yard loss. This is what we're talking about with lane integrity. They run the blitz, they fill up the A gap. It's imperative that the ends come up the field and build a wall right there. Build a wall so he can't get out. Great job by the defensive ends, keeping him in the pocket. That's how you play people like Michael Vick. That's how you play people like, uh, what's the quarterback in, in New Orleans? Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks, the same way. The scrambling quarterbacks, you have to get up field, build a wall, and keep him in the pocket when you're blitzing. So Bill Doba talking with his defense. Time here in the field with one minute and nine seconds remaining. Our college football quadruple header continues after our game with 10th ranked Oregon taking on Oregon State and then 16th ranked 
Fresno State looking to upset number one ranked USC. Our college football coverage continues all day right here on FSN. Stanback has been frustrated. Sims is top running back only six yards on six carries and for Isaiah he's five for 11 through the air and 46 yards as a matter of fact his running back James has thrown for more yards than Stanback has on one play. Well, Brink waiting his turn. And uh, Mike Price was the head coach and a guy who gambled all the time. Bill Doble always takes a page out of uh, Mike Price's offensive playbook. And it, he may be going for it with a minute still left in the first half. They skip it to the punter. Douglas gets it off end over end. The Harvey will let it go. And a great bounce inside the 20 yard line. Still rolling towards the 10. How about this? Douglas, it looked like an ugly punt when it started. After you had a quick kick it, and it winds up going over 50. Well, that's why they run a play like this. It confuses the defense, it confuses the returner. And what happens is somebody misses their block. Eventually, you get three guys running to the football. There's Casey Paws. It's dangerous to have your backup quarterback on the field with a trained punt return team. If he goes down, you're going to your third string quarterback. If the starter gets hurt, so a great job. Casey Paws is a tough guy. And now Bill Dova's philosophy may change. With 90 yards to go, they may be attempt to just go to the locker room. He gives it to Harrison. Harrison breaks free. He is over the 100-yard mark for the 14th straight game. And that continues to be a Pac-10 best. This is his final game with the Cougars. Let's go down on the sideline to Cara Capuano. Steve, even more impressive in that streak. He has topped the 100-yard rushing mark eight times this season in the first half, including today. Back to you. There he goes. 107 yards, Cara, he has in the first half. And you tack on about three more. Clock will wind down inside 30 seconds to go. Cougars went for it. Hail Mary successfully last week, but it wasn't from by. 78 yards out. Well, handing it to Harrison is kind of a Hail Mary in itself. <laughs> He's a threat to go the distance anytime. Eight times over 100 yards in the first half. You might want to jump on him if you're a defense. He'll give it to Harrison again. And once again, he's high yardage past the 30 out to the 33. That will be the final play of the first half. But Jerome Harrison already with 111 yards, 122 yards rushing, excuse me. 122 on 18 first half carries. Well, Alex Brink with a fine first half. He threw for 140, but got another 122 from that man. Jerome Harrison, who leads the nation in rushing and now has over 1,800 yards on the season. Cougars at the half lead the 98th meeting between Washington and Washington State, 13 to 7. Right by the Lake Washington. Boats coming up. Fans coming in. Who stole my boat? It's the little one. Somebody's on my boat there. DeMarco's dinghy out there somewhere. <laughs> Let's go down on the sideline with Karen Bildova. Coach, it's a slim lead. What's the key to hanging on to it in the second half? Uh, I just think no turnovers. Play smart football. And uh, a little bit more ball control. Keep it, keep uh, keep Isaiah stand back off the field. All right, thank you, Coach. Pressure was the key for the defense in the first half, Steve. They're going to keep it coming in the second. Kara, he mentioned ball control. Washington State had it for 19 minutes and 14 seconds. It's halftime here in Seattle, where the score is 13-7 Cougars. Right now, it's time to get you all caught up with everything that's happened today in college football. So let's send you to the College Football Studio Saturday Halftime Report. Halftime at Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington. The Cougars from the eastern part of the state leading the Huskies from the western side of the state, 13 to 7. Steve Fiziak along with DeMarco Far. DeMarco, time of possession. Bill Doba talked about ball control. Cougars have added 19 and a half minutes to the Huskies, 10 and a half. We talked about it in our keys of the game. The Huskies are going to have to establish the run game 
to, to take some time off this clock and keep the Washington State Cougars off the field. You see the rushing yards, 126 to 36. Jerome Harrison really doing the job nine times over 100 yards. Got another one today by the first half. You see 36 yards by the Huskies. James Sims not finding enough room. And it's been about finishing plays for the Cougars. They had two big missed opportunities to score points. They didn't do it. They came away with field goals. That's been the story of this game so far. 266 yards total offense. Alex Brink for the fine first half. He was 10 for 17 for 140 yards and a touchdown. And on the first possession, completed and converted two big third and long plays, including one to Greg Prater for the touchdown. So now the Cougars will get it first in the second half after they lost the coin toss, and Husky said they wanted it to open the game. Well, the Cougars will have excellent field position out near the midfield. And Jerome Harrison having a terrific first half. He needs 44 yards to move into seventh place all time. Pac-10 single season rushing. Impressive company. And Harrison. What a season and what a last two years he has had for Washington State. Now 122 yards on 18 carries for number one Jerome Harrison. Brink will go away from him, look downfield, and he was hit in the backside as he was trying to throw it to the sideline and Trandon Harvey, who was wide open. Grayson Gunheim coming around the corner again, coming from his right defensive end spot. He switches sides. Watch him go up the field, little head fake, comes around the corner, does a great job with his hands coming underneath, getting pressure on Brink. That's what you're going to have to do if you're the Huskies. If you rush four, you got to get there. It's on the big guys up front right now. Jerome Harrison going to the right, breaking free, past the 40, inside Husky territory at the 35-yard line. We talked about patience. We talked about his ability to set up blocks. He kind of trots along on the pitch. And watch the blocking. Watch it develop. You see at the toss. Now watch his blockers. Here they come. He's just trotting along, waiting. As soon as he sees the block is picked up, he takes off running. I mean, that's what you want in a running back right there. He's an exciting guy to watch run the football. He came in leading the nation and rushing this year. Five yards per game up on D'Angelo Williams. And Jerome Harrison now with over 1,800 yards on the season and 142 in the game. Now on 20 carries. Well, they talked about him. Uh, the Washington State Cougars offensive coaching staff said at the beginning of his career at Washington State, they tried to speed him up. They wanted him to hit the hole faster. Eventually, they saw the genius in his work. They said, hey, Jerome, you do what you do. Find the holes and break through them. He's really been their guy all season. Three wide left, second down 11. Harrison, that time. The defense read it beautifully, and Evan Benjamin was there. So was Donnie Mariaki. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. And for Washington, it's all about stopping the O. The offense of the Cougars. Third down, 10. From the four-man rush, no blitz. Brink throws, completes the pass to Cody Boyd. He ne needed to get to the 25-yard line for a first down. He'll come up a yard shy. So decision time here for Bill Doba. And he is right now sending in the field goal unit to try and give his team extend the lead to nine. Well, it's a game of adjustments. The first quarter, you saw the Cougars going after the Husky corners. They bring the safeties over the help, which leaves the tight end wide open. So Cody Boyd getting a lot of work. He is 13 for 19. This field goal attempt will come from 40. He hit one from 48 earlier. Be from 43 yards out. Langley has it up long enough, and Lauren has it a little bit wide. So the lead remains just six for the Cougars.
Washington has one of the best crew teams in the nation. We're right on Lake Washington where they practice. And here is Isaiah Stanback. And he will go deep downfield and a wide open Russo, who twice has been wide open. And that would have given the Huskies the lead as Stanback overthrew. But a penalty flag is down. He will be holding against the offense. Holding number 88 offense 10-yard penalty still first down Hold by the tight end Robert Lewis Coming around the corner anytime me you ask a tight end to block a defensive end Or a linebacker this is what you run the risk of their pass catchers Robert Lewis not the biggest of guys Feisty will do the job for you But sometimes we'll get caught with his hand in the cookie jar or around the jersey and get called for holding Fifth penalty to the Cougars one. So now it is again a first down. And they try James Sims. It's one of his rare runs for positive yardage. He's coming off a 200 yard rushing performance against Arizona. Only had six yards on six carries in the first half. And he gains about four on this play. And yeah, not a lot of room for him to run. The Cougar defensive line doing a great job of constricting those holes, taking up bodies, allowing those middle linebackers to get in there. And Get shots on Sims and Sims and stand back. We were told those were the two who had to make plays. So it's Isaiah's turn. He will look downfield and complete the pass to Russo. Shy of the first down, they need to get to the 40 36 yard line in their own territory. We talked about this earlier the marquee matchup in Crystal Bruce going against Joe Toledo. Toledo, the best offensive lineman Washington has to offer. Does a great job against the Pac-10 second leading sacker. Keeps him away from his quarterback. Anytime you can stonewall their best pass rusher, it gives you nothing but confidence. It helps your offense. It helps your quarterback. Well, you knew that Toledo was a good athlete. He played tight end the last few years. Offensive lineman and perhaps NFL bound next year. Stand back. He needs seven for the first down. It is dropped right in the hands of Russo. And Washington is three and out. Four and out if you include that penalty. Another missed opportunity coming on the screen. You see Coach Willingham not happy with it. Had a shot. It was a great call. Just couldn't bring it in. That's one That's one you need if you're the Huskies. You have to sustain drives. Now you're going to put the offense, the Cougar offense, back on the field with a lead. And you have to say they're going to run Harrison until you stop them. Well, Tyron Willingham trying to change the culture of this Washington program. He wants them to be mentally tougher, their attention to detail perfect, develop an attitude of the Huskies. And he wants it to be perfection. Here's a fumble on the play, and the Huskies may have it. Let's see. Yes, they do. This might be the break the Huskies were looking for after a three and out. When you make a mistake, you give the other team life. You can hear Husky Stadium coming to life right now. Short punt, has a chance to return it. Maybe took his eyes off the football for a half a second, bounced off his chest. And the Huskies, Johnny on the spot, watch. Puts his head down just for a half second, goes right through his arms, right into the hands of J.R. Wolfolk, who actually missed the play on the kick return, allowed the Cougars to get out to great field position, makes amends, makes the recovery for the Huskies. Cougars without one of the best punt return men in the country, Michael Bumpus, who is injured. And Sims gets the call and the carry. But this is a situation after the turnover, the Huskies have to come up with points. Yeah, you, you have to right now. The momentum's on your side. you got great field position. You may not be on this end of the field again, so you have to take advantage of it. DeMarco, are you surprised that Tyrone Willingham has not run more option to stand back? Very surprised. I'm very surprised. We, he told us they were going to run more option. I think you'd see it down here in the red zone with Stanback closer to the end zone. Well, Sims with 11 yards at eight carries, 189 fewer than he had last week against Arizona. This time he tries to make the play on his own, but read well by the Cougar defense. They have really, you, you call it gap integrity. They've shown it with Stanback. Lane integrity. Well, we talked about running the option. Well, every pass play they call is basically a run pass option. For Stanbeck. He has the opportunity to pull it down right here. He can either throw it out to the slot receiver or pull it down just like he does and try to make a play. 
Sometimes he tries to run a little too much. Other times he may overthrow. So it's a balance thing with Standback. It's going to have to be money right now. Washington State showing blitz, and here they come. Standback tries to pick it up, dumps it left side. Oh, Shackelford cannot hold on at the 25. Would have been a first down. Good coverage from Eric Frampton, the strong safety. Great job by the Cougar defense stepping in after a turnover. The thought process of any defensive player is after a turnover, limit the damage, hold them to a field goal. Here they come on the blitz. They pick it up well. Standback gets it out on time. Now watch Frampton right there. Gets his hand in at the last second and, bat and bats it down. Shackelford actually had two chances at it. Frampton, the Cougars' leading tackler, does a great job in pass coverage. And on fourth and seven, Tyrone Willingham had them going for it. They may have to take a timeout here because they were spending, and they will take a timeout. A timeout comes here in the third quarter. 9.23 left. Cougars 13, Huskies 7. There's a buzz here at Husky Stadium as Tyrone Willingham will go for it on fourth and seven from the 32-yard line of Washington State. Look for something to get on the corner here, get Stan back on the move. He has them all spread out, two receivers left, two to the right. Stan back fires and completes the pass for a first down at the 22-yard line. Oh, the guts of Tyrone Willingham. I love it when the coaches make plays like that. They take chances on fourth down. You had a long field goal or this. Well, we talked about it after a timeout, after you burn a timeout, you're going to have to go for it now. Does a great job. And let me tell you, Juice Sandback has a great arm. He can get it there in a hurry. One-on-one, -on -one, he could come inside or outside. That was his nickname growing up. Zeus. Zeus. I like that. Zeus Standback. What an athlete, though. Tyrone Willingham really believes in Isaiah Standback, who will come back next year as a senior. They have a terrific freshman coming in, Jake Locker, from Ferndale High School. And he's in the playoffs. That's a good name for a football player. Locker. Yeah. Locker or do they have a guy named Smash Mouth? I'm sure there's one out there somewhere. <laughs> Here's a play that's under review. Guns it out. Looks like he has it. Both feet in. Both feet in. Unless he was juggling it. But it has to be not even debatable. Clear. So we will see right now it is a first down. After Tyrone Willingham made the decision to go for it on fourth down and seven. Stand back. A lot of people feel that he might be the most improved player in the Pac-10 Conference from where he was a year ago. Last year he came off the bench in the Apple Cup and led the Huskies to a late rally. They fell by 328-25. Really played solid all season. Played well versus USC. Played well versus Arizona State. Played well versus Cal. Had some turnovers, but with the dual threat that he is, sometimes he'll put it on the ground. And the officials have just said that Williams was indeed inbound, so it is a first down for the Huskies at the Cougars' 22-yard line. Washington State has only once in the last 20 years come away with a victory at Husky Stadium, a 41-35 win in the 1997 game that clinched a trip to the Rose Bowl for the Cougars. Now to try to keep the Huskies out of the end zone. They run left. Nothing. Well, they stretched it out beautifully with Scott Davis over there, Will Dirting, and Christo Bruce in the same territory. Scott Davis doing a, a heck of a job. Takes on two blockers and actually eats up the fullback as well. Two blockers, and he beats them both and gets the Sims. That's the kind of effort you need in the red zone if you're the Cougar defense. You need guys that will go that extra mile and not trade one for one. So Sims with just 11 yards on nine carries. Standback has been forced into a lot of second and long. Dirting showing blitz. Here he comes. So does Davis. Standback throws behind. And uh, only at his tight, at his offensive lineman. And there is a flag down. And I just wonder if it's because 
there wasn't a receiver in the area. That looked like the old tackle eligible play. They run this before to Joe Toledo. Remember, he's a former tight end. There he is. He blocks, he blocks, he blocks. And then he tries to slip out. Tries to slip out. They, the Cougars think they have him. Just too much pressure for Stanback to get it over the head of the rush to get it to Joe Toledo. Doesn't Toledo have to have a different jersey on? Can he go with 67? If you come in and you identify with the referee and say, hey, I'm going to play tight end on this play, but that's some, that sometimes gives it away to the defense. So you have these plays. It's a trick play. It almost worked for, for the Huskies, but you have to say that's one for the Cougars. And that is the sixth penalty, seventh penalty, excuse me, on Washington in this afternoon's game. So Shacklebird and Russo go to the right side on second down and 15 yards to go. Stand back. Escapes. Cuts inside. This is his great ability. He's inside the 20, near the 15, when he could have lost five. Just a dynamic play. When I see quarterbacks do this, McNabb, Vic, I always say they should have to dribble if they run like this. But watch this. Watch the play break down. Here comes Dirty. He eludes him. Cuts back. And Cristo Bruce shakes him. Misses another tackle. Makes another guy miss and gets up the football field. With a guy like Stanback, when he pulls that ball down, he's one of the better running backs in the country. Huskies in the red zone. Not that great. 33 opportunities, 17 touchdowns, 33 into the air. Touchdown, Washington! Craig Chambers! Going against the smaller corner, Alex Teams. Six foot three, Craig Chambers. Maybe got away with a little push off or a pull down, a la Michael Irvin. Marshall Stanbeck throws it up right now. He knows what he wants. Alex Teams just misplays the ball. That's what you call a fade stop by the receiver. Great catch, great throw, excellent play call. So the Huskies have a chance of taking their first lead of the game on the extra point by Evan Knutson. It is up and dead solid, perfect. And Washington has gone up one on the Cougars in the Apple Cup. Stanbeck, Chambers. 14-13 Huskies. FSN Live Rivalry Day presented by your Northwest Chevy dealers. Mark Griffin, special teams mistakes hurting the Cougars. When things are going well, Brian, you find a way to win. When they're not, you find a way to lose. Special teams is one of those ways. The Huskies have been out of rhythm today, but in a game like this, Sunday Six Killer, all you need is a break or two big play. Well, you got to take it in for a score. You can get the breaks, Brian. But you got to score, and the Huskies finally pulled one off. Well, we got a barn burner here in the Apple Cup. Back upstairs, Steve Fiziak to Marco Far with Kara Cal Craig Chambers with his sixth touchdown catch of the year on a third down and three. But you have to go back to the decision made by Tyrone Willingham on fourth down and seven going for it. And the Huskies go 35 yards and seven plays after the fumble. But they went for it on fourth and seven, got the first down on Stanback's toss to Corey Williams. So now the kickoff. Lucy number three, and he will take it. And he escapes one man past the 20 and out of bounds near the 21 yard line. Looked like he might have pulled up there yeah. on the return. May have fooled the Huskies. They didn't know what was happening. It's always tough when you see the guy with the football and he's obviously in pain. You don't want to drill a guy who's who's hurting. You know, your, your humanity steps in, but you got to do what you have to do. Receives the ball well. Looks like he just takes a step and immediately goes and starts to limp. Jordan in motion. They run Harrison to the left. Flag is down. Harrison only gains one yard. Anytime you see the laundry anywhere near the line of scrimmage, you got to say it's holding. And with the zone blocking, that 
the Cougars are using, trying to free up Harrison on the corner. And with the, the way the Huskies defensive line slant charges and strong the weak, eventually somebody's going to pull somebody down and happen there. So Alex Brink, the quarterback for Washington State, will be pushed back inside the 15-yard line. Brink has had a solid game throwing for 149 yards and one touchdown. And he led the Cougars to that three-point win last year, throwing for 240 yards and two scores. Now, if you're the Huskies right now, you, you're in the shadow, or the Cougars are in the shadow of your goal line, you may think blitz here. So if you're the Cougars, you might try something real short, maybe a draw play or a screen out to the flat, trying to take advantage of a one-on-one. -on -one. There's a sun over here. How about that? Came out late. That's the warm end of the field. First down, 20 yards to go. Brink trying to throw the screen, throws it out to Harrison. Harrison slipped by one and gets it back to the 20 yard line where he is completely tied up by Goldson and company. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio for a Kiyosara game break with Mike Goldberg. This number five Penn State well on their way to securing a Big Ten title and a berth in the BCS. After a block punt for a touchdown made it 10 to nothing. Michael Robinson here splits a couple of would-be tacklers. Goes 33 yards for the score. After two straight losing seasons, Penn State's on its way to being 10 and 1. The number five team in the nation and Joe Pod getting it done. They swing it out to Harrison again. He is to the 25. They'll still need about seven, maybe eight more yards, considering where the mark is for a first down. So a big defense and offensive play for both sides. Two straight screens by the Cougars. You have to think the Huskies are coming with the blitz. The Cougars are thinking the same thing. They try to get it out to Harrison real quick on the perimeter, try to take advantage of the flat coverage by the Huskies. So far, doing a great job of getting Harrison on the ground before he has a chance to do real damage. Brink has his favorite target, Hill, out to the left side, single coverage. He's gone his way when he's needed big plays. Brink changing the play, maybe noticing Hill in single coverage. Now the safety rolls over that way, so he swings it back to the right side, and Harvey drops the ball it's incomplete it would not have been a first down anyway great blitz by the dogs getting there not every blitz is designed to get a sack it's designed to control the quarterback and make him throw it where you want you see benjamin coming off the corner he's got to get rid of it right now and there's a cornerback playing the sticks which means he has his heels on the first down yard marker keep everything in front great job by the huskies getting them out shackleford standing at his 35 Awaiting the punt from Kyle Bosler. Bosler, end over the end. Shackleford with a chance to return. Fumbles the ball! Cougars get it! Brian Hall comes up with it. A Husky mistake. Now giving Washington State a chance to reclaim the lead. In special teams, bobbles it, gets their hand in on it, jumps on the football. You see Shaq, he brings it in, and then somebody gets their hand on the football. We can't see it, he flew by too fast. And there's Big Hall getting his hands on the football, recovering it for the Cougars. And you have to say the Cougars have to take advantage of the field position. Well, let's see if they go back to Harrison. He has 173 at Washington State's. 308 yards total offense, but the Huskies defense has picked it up here in the second half, and obviously some great adjustments by Kent Bear, their defensive coordinator. There's Grayson Gunheim again showing up, making plays, and you got to say it's the D line for the Huskies that must step up, must make plays, and if you're the Cougars, get it in the hands of your playmakers, get it out to Jason Hill. Second and 11. Brink going for the home run. And it's broken up by Matt Fontaine. Matthew Fontaine coming up with the big play. Locked one-on-one. -on -one. 
with Jason Hill. Did you just get a phone call from his brother? He's in the stands. <laughs> hey, well, the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Matthew Fontaine, the brother of Jamal Fontaine, one of my esteemed teammates from the glory years, if you will, from the Huskies in the stands today. 91 but national championship year. I remember this kid when he was eight years old stealing my gloves out of my locker now it's now he's out there playing hey, he's got them on too yeah, there they are <laughs> hill to the left harvey in the slot third down and 11. they run harrison to the right side he gets the 30. so they are within field goal range for langley it will be a long field goal but it could reclaim the lead for the cougars They'll need three yards for the first down. It's fourth and three. Dover could still go for it. He has not sent Langley out to the field. It would be a field goal of about 47 yards. He's missed one already from 40 and one from 51. So Dover saying, hey, he's 50%. We've got a 50% chance of making it. They gave him a great mark instead of fourth and two. It's fourth and one. Harrison. Ooh, they will probably have to measure this one. They needed to get to the 27 yard line for a first down. And Harrison's lean. They will have to measure here. On well, fourth and one, that time Harrison can't be patient. He must attack the line of scrimmage. The Cougars doing a great job of getting some separation, creating a little seam, and trying to get upfield. Husky's doing the job. C.J. Wallace coming in, dropping a shoulder. I don't know if it's going to be enough. First down, Washington State. Well, the Huskies were rewarded with a touchdown going for it on fourth and seven. Now let's see if Bill Dove is rewarded for it. A lot of Cougar fans coming over the mountains from the Palouse. Bill Dovo spent 14 years as the assistant coach, the defensive coordinator, many of those years for Mike Price. And the Cougars had their glory years going to the Rose Bowl. They had three straight 10 win seasons. Harrison skips through to the 20 yard line, gain of seven. Now 159 yards rushing by the nation's leader. The Cougar offensive line doing a great job knocking a hole in the Husky defense. Bobby Bird, Sean O'Connor creating a the hole. There's Big Sean getting his block, gets a pancake. You can't see it to the top right of your screen. They're doing a great job. The only guy that's made a play is Grayson Gunheim from that defensive line. Second down, three. Harrison again. Finds a hole. First down. He will score the touchdown. The genius, the brilliance of Jerome Harrison. This is why he leads the nation in rushing, so patient, so explosive, to make any play a scoring play by making one guy miss. Well, he just moved into seventh place all-time Pac-10 single season rushing, passing Corey Dillon, that great Washington Husky, who is a world champion for the New England Patriots. Now 1,709 yards rushing. Beautiful run. The patience waiting for the blocks. And he is so elusive. Even Bill Dover said, we knew he was good. We didn't know he was this good. You see him making people miss inside, outside. And this is the Apple Cup. Don't expect many taunting penalties or personal fouls. Well, they've got a five-point lead. And it looks like they're going to go for two to make it seven. So 
Bill Doba taking a chance on fourth and one going for it and it was a long fourth and one and getting a first down by inches and he is rewarded with a touchdown by Jerome Harrison who now has 179 yards rushing in this game on just 26 carries Tyrone Willingham he's going to need Isaiah stand back to do it again who led his team down to for a touchdown in the third quarter. Let's go down on the sideline to Kara Capuano. Well, guys, we keep talking about the brilliance of Harrison, but he's the first guy to credit the offensive line in front of him. Before the UCLA game, he bought them a cake and put cards in their lockers, and by the way, went out and put up his season best 260 yards and a pair of touches. So he knows it's a shared effort. Steve? Kara, they're going for two. Brink rolling to his right. Firing. Incomplete. So the lead is just five for the Cougars. With 2.53 remaining in the third quarter, Tyrone Willingham's Huskies down 19 to 14. Yeah. You've heard the cliche, you've got to have a short memory. Now, Harrison just put the Cougars back on top, but you have to come out and play the two point conversion. They try to get Brink on the corner and hit Jason Hill. The Huskies flood the zone, make him have to put too much air under it. Big miss on the conversion. Two gutsy calls by the coaches going for it on fourth down and coming up with a first down and getting the touchdowns. It's tough for a defense. I mean, they say you have to have a short memory, one snap and clear. But if you're the guy that missed the tackle that allows them to get in the end zone, that's what you're thinking about. But you have to come right back, put it behind you, and play the next snap. Well, it's just another Cougar close game. They quite easily could be heading to a bowl game. But the Washington State Cougars have been uh, held back in so many late game losses this year. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio for a Kiyosara game break with Mike Goldberg. Fizz history in college football's oldest rivalry. For the first time in the 102 meetings between Harvard and Yale, we go to overtime. And in the third overtime, the Crimson win it 30 to 24 on the touchdown there. Meanwhile, Notre Dame cruising over Syracuse at home, 27-3. Brady Quinn, another fine performance. He may get himself invited to New York City for the Heisman. And who was he recruited by? How about Tyrone Willingham? Well, here's Washington coming right back and getting a first down up near the 45-yard line as Stanback hit Robert Lewis. He's been on target the last two drives. Big Robert Lewis, the tight end. The Huskies have a pretty good tight end tradition. Robert Lewis, the sophomore, will grow into that position, does a great job of getting open. He's a big target at 6'5", and you said that Stanback has been on the money, but a, but a receiver that's 6'5", he's just kind of laying in there. Watch, on the play fake, holds the safety, holds the linebacker. He's able to throw it over the top into the arms of Lewis, who does a great job of fighting for extra yards. Talk about the tight ends. You got Ernie Conwell still playing, Mark Bruner. A bunch of guys coming through here as Husky tight ends. I remember when Mark Bruner was a true freshman. Came out and he ran over Steve Evan. Steve Evan, the greatest Evans. defensive football player you have ever seen. Ran him right over. <laughs> I hope Steve didn't hear that. <laughs> well, here is that fourth and seven play. Stand back. Firing a strike on fourth and seven to Corey Williams, and they come up with the touchdown. And a fourth and one for Washington State. Harrison for the yard needed. First down, and Doba also rewarded with a touchdown. Now from the 45, first and 10. Stand back, will throw. He has Sims wide open right side, gets it to him at midfield. First down to the 45, now to the 41 in Washington State territory. right now by the Cougar defensive line. A couple of two or three guys in the same gap. He's trying to rush. You see him, Crystal Bruce coming in. They stalemate each other. Stanbeck does a great job of splitting the other side. Dumps it off to Sims, who's just waiting for the football. Huskies moving the ball. And Stanbeck making the plays. They said it was Stanbeck and Sims who had to come up with big plays. Sims comes up with one, but Isaiah Knopp, 125 yards passing, 143 yards rushing. Where's he going on this one? 
Well, Frampton with a nice tackle on the play. But it looked like he wanted to pump and go out to the corner. But the receiver forgot the go part. Stanbeck's waiting. Can't wait versus a good rush like the Cougars. And now it's Stanbeck time. He tries to make, make it happen. And athletic ability out of a quarterback. Tough kid, Stanbeck. Frampton leads the team in tackles coming in with 80. Sims, the lone setback. Stand back again in trouble and cut down from behind. It'll be third and long. Scott Davis, the 5'11", 228-pound junior from Kennewick, Washington, on the tackle. Let me tell you something. Scott Davis saves the touchdown here. They came on the blitz. There's Will Dirty going by it. There's nobody in front of Isaiah Stanback. If he could break this tackle, he's still running. Well, it's third down and 11. Chambers, who scored the touchdown, goes wide to the right. Shackleford, who scored the first touchdown, wide to the left. Stanback looking over the middle for Shackleford. Now that goes down the middle. First down at the 25-yard line. Cody Ellis. Isaiah Stanback having all kinds of time. The offensive line for the Huskies really stepping up, doing the job. You watch Will Dirty coming on the blitz. Now he's got a knee injury. You got to think on this Astro turf with the knee brace, he's going to be a bit sore, not getting the pressure. Stanback is able to stand back there, pick his spots, finds the open man, gets the first down. 15 seconds remaining, third quarter from the 20. Sims. First big hole he's had in a while, and he's inside the 10-yard line. His biggest run of the day. Well, there was just no one home for the Cougars on the right side of their defensive line. They come with the blitz over here. There's no one home to stop Sims. It's an easy cut. He picks up big yardage. That's the end of the third quarter. James Sims has Washington first and goal at the five yard line. When we come back, 15 minutes left in the Apple Cup here in Seattle. There are two of the top Cougar fans enjoying this game and this Nissan summary. Harrison with 179 yards rushing. The national leader in rushing this year. Shackle for three catches, 100 yards. Washington State dominating possession, but the Huskies can take the lead. They have a first and goal at the five yard line, running the I formation. Stand back to throw. Now he scrambles in trouble. And he dances and is out of bounds near the three yard line. And Christo Smith, or Bruce, had a shot at him. Stand back escaped that and gains two to the three yard line. Cougars doing a good job of jumping on his first read, taking away the tight end, the flare out, and this is where Stanback comes in. This is his brilliance again. This play has no business working, but he's just so fast. He beats contain, gets positive yards, gets something out of nothing. Second and goal. The light is the fullback. They give it a Sims big hole. He is there. Touchdown, Washington. Tyrone Willingham's philosophy. He thinks that a football team should be able to play a month more, a month longer. It looks like the Huskies right now in better condition than the Cougars. The defensive line of the Cougars trying to get that body language like they're tired, hands on the hips. They're getting pushed around right now. Sims doing a great job keeping his feet moving, getting it in the end zone. Great drive, 80 yards in eight plays. One of the things Tyrone Willingham wanted to do is develop leadership here at Washington. Now leading by one, he has told his team they want to go for two points here for a lead that would make Washington State kick a field goal to tie them. But Tyrone Willingham, we asked him, I, 
how do you develop leadership? And he says, well, one of the things we did, we went over to the Human Resources Department, went to the business school. We had some of their professors come in and speak to the kids because those are the real leaders in the professional world. So he was going with everybody. And uh, we saw we've seen great leadership by stand back here in the second half. Watch the push by the offensive line. You see them come around. They ran the power play. And it's sort of a, a power dive. Sims taking it right up the middle. And they just try to push the nose tackle. They double the nose tackle, get movement. It's not about breaking the long one. It's just about getting into the end zone. Huskies doing a great job of really bearing down in the second half, coming back after some missed opportunities and a couple of miscues in, the, in special teams and taking the lead in the fourth quarter. Sims now with 29 yards on 11 carries. That's after a 200 yard effort last week. Meantime, Standback picking up his game, 44 yards rushing, and he has also thrown for 142 passing. Watch this, double team the nose tackle, take him right in the end zone, chip off on the on the linebacker, come around. They had a shot at it. Big defensive lineman had his hands on Sims, but they're taught to run through arm tackles. Well, Excellent with the play. two point conversion, will they go for the option now? I look for the same exact play Washington State this morning. There it is. They roll to the right. He flips it. Russo has the two. And Washington goes up three on the Cougars. Stand back to Russo. And the Huskies lead in the fourth quarter over the Cougars in Seattle. Isaiah stand back just off the phone with offensive coordinator Tim Lapano. He's had a terrific second half and here rolling and giving the ball to James Sims and then moving to his right for the two point conversion to Anthony Russo to give the Huskies a three point lead in the fourth quarter. Now it's the Cougars turn. Washington State needs to win to avoid their first 0 and 8 conference record since 1998 and the team finished three and eight Huskies trying to make it two wins in a row before they move to the offseason they beat Arizona last week and they are winning this afternoon 22 to 19 a triple head of the day on Fox Sports Net in the Pac-10 next Oregon Oregon State and then Fresno State at the number one team in the nation the University of Southern California Trojans will they add Harrison back deep Let's right now send it to our college football Saturday studio for a Kyocera game break with Mike Goldberg. Billy Ray. I thought Tennessee wow. would go bowling this year. I thought they'd have seven, eight wins this time of year. Here we go. Brink with the blitz on, and Alex has to throw it away. Washington really getting after it, and the guy who's been leading them is Grayson Gunheim, the true sophomore. Really doing the job. Six foot four, 245 pounds. You watch him, they leave him on the receiver. The deception is supposed to stop him. He doesn't buy it. He goes right to the quarterback like he's taught to do. Randy Hart, the great defensive line coach from Washington, been here through five head coaches. They keep him around. He's a great coach. Shows up in Grayson Gunheim. Only 22 yards throwing in the second half for Alex Brink. Harrison, big hole left side. And he will get the first down. An excellent run by Jerome Harrison, who now has 190 yards rushing. Excellent cutback, great blocking. Watch the offensive line. They all block down, block down. It's just a big cutback lane for Harrison. It's going to be tough for any defender to stop Harrison when he's got that much room. You can't allow a running back of his caliber that much space, or he's going to hurt you. 191 on 27 carries his season and career best. He had a 260 yard game against UCLA. But that was also a game that Washington State led by 21 points only to lose in overtime. Harvey for the first down and he's out of bounds near midfield. Excellent block on the corner. Great block on the screen. It's imperative to get the first guy down so the inside defender doesn't have a shot at the screener. Right here, watch the block right here. He's already on the ground. Now, C.J. Wallace has got to come over 
to make the play. And let me tell you, that's a long way to run for any safety trying to catch a receiver out in the flat. So it's Harrison and Brink leading the way. And now Jerome short side of the field. And he is banged down in a tough play by number 27, Evan Benjamin, that outside linebacker. Well, he's all about Washington. His sister Paige is an All-American volleyball player at Washington. His dad was a running back for the Seahawks. He's got athlete in the blood. I just like the way he hits. And, and you know what Tyrone Willingham was saying? I just wish we had him one more year. Blitz on again, coming from the outside. Brink steps up. He will run, but there's a flag down. And this one might be coming back. It could be holding because it appeared that a Husky had an angle and was being held up. No, it's a face mask. Well, apparently the officials didn't see the hold, but they did see a face mask and it will go against Washington first down. Personal foul, face mask, number 91 defense. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. That's just a natural progression. You're rushing against a bigger guy. Donnie Matiki going up against Bobby Bird. Trying to get some pass rush, trying to get some pressure. Your hand slips up in. And it just so happens the ref sees you and it's a, it's a big penalty. You can get your hand in the face mask, but they always tell you you got to get it down quick. Looks like Donnie just held on too long and maybe Slam Bird on the ground with it. You have to make that call. And that is the seventh penalty against the Washington Huskies for 70 yards. Only two penalties for Washington State. Cougars first down, 24 yard line in Husky territory. Harrison on the draw. Not much, maybe three yards to the 21. Trying to spread the Huskies out. Hit Jerome Harrison up the middle, one on one with the linebacker. The nose tackle does a great job of coming off his block, getting in the way of Harrison and giving his guys time to come in and make the play. Boy, this is a Harrison opportunity. Harrison side of the field here. Look for the Cougars to spread you out and try to attack the middle of the Husky defense. Play action. Brink with time. First down, Trandon Harvey. Ten yard line, then a fumble. Was he down first? I believe he was, and they are ruling him down at the ten yard line. So Brink picking it up a bit more. As he now has 180 yards passing in the game. Great job by the Cougar offense on the play call. They're trying to make one guy play both, play run and pass, and you can't do both against the Cougars. You have to step up and run support versus Harrison, and then you let your, your pass coverage slip right by you, right to the middle of the football field. Well, they're spreading it out again, but are they spreading it out for freedom for Jerome Harrison to run the ball? They give it to Jerome. And he is stuck right at the line of scrimmage. Chris Stevens, a backup outside linebacker, came in who's a true freshman from Mojave, Mojave California. And uh, no game for Jerome Harrison, so he stays at 192 yards rushing on 30 carries. Well, if you're Chris Stevens, Stevens, you frame that shot. You just took down the NC2A leader in rushing by yourself. That's what you write home about. They'll keep the tight end in this time. Also have a wing to the right side. Brink looking left, throwing left, into coverage, incomplete. He saw it was well covered, just threw it away. So it'll be third down and 10. I mean, you at least want the field goal for the tie. Brink still has one more chance for the six. Yeah, you've got to come away with points to do the Cougars here. And the Huskies defensive line, Chris Stevens has lined up a defensive end at left end. 
Langley, meantime, two for four. He's made two from 22 and 48, but missed the two also. Both were beyond 40 yards out. There's Chris Stevens. Crowd picking up here at Husky Stadium. Incomplete. Harvey broke free at the last moment, but there was great coverage earlier by Deshaun Golds in the free safety. And it looked to me like Brink had a shot on the slant. He just put a little too much air on it. You see him shaking his head and said, yeah, that's one I should have got right here. Watch the inside move. Fakes like he's coming inside. Good physical move. Thought he had a shot, just overthrows him. Goldson, though, looked like he was coming in from the free safety spot. And he might have seen that as well. Right now, Langley from 27 yards out for the tie. No good! Lauren Langley, one of the top kickers in the Pac-10, misses from 27. Lauren Langley can't be hanging his head for long because he may have an opportunity later in this game to win it. But this from 27, very poorly struck. Middle of the ball rather than underneath and just hooks it off to the left side. And Washington holds on to their 22 to 19 lead over Washington State. 98th meeting between the Huskies and Cougars. Huskies with 63 wins, Cougars 28, six times. Here's James Sims. He's been much better in the second half. Past the 30, first down to the 38 yard line. It's time for our trivia question here at Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington. The question is the longest Cougar win streak in the 97 game series. James Sims all of a sudden beginning to break out. He only had six yards in the first half, has 41 in the second half. Stand back to throw. Plenty of time. Wings it out deep. Incomplete. Chambers well covered. Terrific coverage by Alex Teams, senior from San Pedro, California. Pretty good protection by the Husky offensive line. The Cougars right now, Dick Rapati, Pito Itua in the game. Probably their best defensive lineman got hurt on the last snap of contract contact drills coming out of fall practice. Big number 75, six foot eight, 299 pounds. There he is right there, the big giant in the middle. They put him in just to push the pocket. Simmons again with room to run. And then it closes up to a gain about three yards. And James down on the ground and slow in getting up. Again, that trivia question about the longest Cougar win streak in the 97 game series. They won last year. That's the Aflac trivia question. We'll give you the answer later in this fourth quarter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I, can I answer? No, you can't. Oh. <laughs> You've got to let our fans have a chance. James Sims down and hurt. Yeah, he took a big shot. The Cougars got there in a hurry. Will Dirty. Sees it right now, reads the play, diagnoses it quick, fights off the block. Now watch this hit. Ooh, yeah. Three on one. That's, yeah. That's a big shot. Same same play. The Willis McGahee got hurt a couple of years ago. Outstanding running back for the Miami Hurricanes. It's always tough. You got to take a linebacker on with your shoulder, and then the corner's coming unblocked with a straight shot to your leg. So Tyrone Willingham may have to finish this game without his best running back Sims limping to the sideline now 50 yards rushing remember only six in the first half so he will bring on Kenny James who has great experience last year James led the team in rushing with 702 yards and five touchdowns so Willingham knows that he'll need to have that success he is red shirting maybe the most talented running back J.R. Hasty. 
instead they'll go with Chris Singleton the third team back number 42 his first appearance in the game stand back downfield he goes for Chambers and it's almost intercepted in and out of the hands of Hussein Abdullah Abdullah doing a great job of staying at home holding the post Stanbeck tries to muscle one in there into double coverage. You see it, guns it. There's two defenders down there. Abdullah doing a great job of playing center field, playing big bounce over the top. Almost has the pick. Hits the turf. So Douglas dropping back, standing at his 26. Harvey has been the return artist. There's a line drive kick along Harvey for the return. Takes it at the 13, escapes one man. Finally dropped near the 18 19 yard line. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio for a Kyocera game break with Mike Goldberg. Well, Fizz, you are putting the finishing touches on game two. Game three, we remain in the Pac 10 and we get to watch this man, Mike Hass, the all time, uh, he's the all everything wide receiver for Oregon State, leads the nation in yards per game. It's the 109th Civil War. Oregon State against number 10 Oregon. They're only lost to number one USC. And Mike Goldberg, how about that guy, Mike Haas? 100, 1,425 yards this year on 80 catches. Incredible. And he's a guy who walked on to the Oregon State program, might leave as their finest receiver. Oh, we talked about him earlier in the year. He walked onto the football team and just kept beating the daylights out of the starting unit. And just said, hey, we got to get this guy in a lineup. Mike Riley loves him. The whole game plan is to get the ball out to Haas's hands. And he's done, he does a great job after the catch. Yeah, and Mike Cass. Mike Cass, and uh, he, he's got a, a good one to go against as Oregon trying to go 10 and 1 during each Pac 10 football head to head matchup on FSN this year at Pontiac Pac 10 game changing performance was selected. Pontiac awarded the school. $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund. Harrison, just a yard. Well, now here is your chance to vote for the Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance of the year, where Pontiac will award $10,000 to the winning school's General Scholarship Fund. Go to pac-10.org to vote and for your chance to win a pair of season tickets to your favorite Pac-10 football team, that's pac-10.org to vote now through November 24th. Pontiac is the official performance machines of the Pac-10 conference. Jerome Harrison, one-yard game goes out of bounds. He said this is the Apple Cup, not many personal fouls, but you can't do this on the opponent bench in full view of the referees. It's an easy call. They have to control the game. So you don't want to call it. You don't want to move a team back with a penalty, but you have to do it if you're the official. So a tougher road to travel for Bill Doba and the Cougars. They'll be backed up. Second down and 18 yards to go from the 10 and a half yard line. So many tough losses and Dover talking about finishing games. He said we've come up with big plays this year, but not at critical times. This is a critical time. Watch out for Jason Hill here. Top of your screen. They go the safety out to help him out. They throw it to Hill. Hill gets it blocked. Almost gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but it will be, still be third down and 12. Well, the receiver screen has been their most consistent pass play. With as much cushion as the Husky defenders have been given their receivers, it's almost a gimme play. You make them throw it in front, you come up and you have to make the tackle. The Huskies are doing a good job of that right now. Joe again. This time he's at the bottom of your screen, matched up one on one with Matthew Fontaine. Four man rush. 
He loops it downfield, and Cody Boyd at that six feet eight high. makes a terrific catch and gets the Cougars first down. We're watching the play unfold. Alex Brink does a great job of buying time. You see the pass rush, the game by the Huskies. He gets it out. Now watch this. Up, taps the feet. Excellent. We're watching this play. We thought it had no chance. And then he comes out of nowhere, Cody Boyd does, and makes a big catch for the Cougars. Throw it up to the big Cougar. Brink 215 yards passing now. He'll run Harrison, and Harrison cut down. Leans forward for one, maybe two yards. It's Gunheim again. I think Gunheim's going to be another in the long line of great Husky defensive ends. This guy's a true sophomore. He's fast. True sophomore. Has the frame to put on at least 25 to 30 more pounds. I think he's going to be a guy to reckon, a force to reckon with within the next couple of years. Having a great game today. Hill to the right. Downfields he goes again too tall for Boyd. That's twice now in the game he's got middle of the field Cody Boyd, and either he was behind him or way over his head. Well, sometimes that's your one on one, the tight end versus the linebacker or safety. Boyd doing a good job of freeing himself. You see the game by the Huskies. Now watch the window Brink has to throw into. You can see Boyd the whole way, kind of leads him just a bit too far. Boyd's dropped or. It's been overthrown at least four times. They've had plays, just can't pull the ball down. You can see our camera position shaking. Husky fans are up stomping their feet. Over 70,000 fans here today. Brink from the shotgun through his hands. And he is out of bounds, shy of the first down. Needed to get to the 45 and cut down at the 38-yard line. Over snap by Milhauser. Excuse me, bobbled by Alex Brink. Now he's just got to make a play, make something happen. Rolling to his left. It's always tough for a lefty rolling to your left to throw it back. Tries to get everything he can and gets horse collared on the Cougar sideline. That's one of the troubles of the shotgun. Sometimes you take your eye off the center to, to read the defense, and the ball doesn't come straight to you because it wasn't a bad kick or snap by Milhauser. Well, we've got 7.56 left and counting. Washington with the lead. Here in Seattle, Washington, uh, one of the greatest defensive linemen in college football history, Steve Entman, teammate of DeMarco Farr. Probably the greatest Husky ever. Long tradition of defensive linemen. Started with Reggie Rogers coming down to Steve Entman. I've seen this guy do some of the most incredible things from the defensive line spot to dominate an entire game from you the tackle spot. But you said ever greater than Hugh McElhaney? Greater than Hugh McElhaney. Oh, man, you are going out can on a limb. Can take three Michigan offensive linemen and push them right back to the pocket. Can you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Hugh was pretty good. He had a 296-yard game against these Cougars in the old rivalry. Here is Stan Beck going for it. And let's send you to our college football Saturday studio for a Kyocera game break with Mike Goldberg. Hey, Fizz, how about South Florida still being uh, on the outside, knocking on the door for a BCS berth? They defeat Cincinnati at home today, 31-16. They're chasing West Virginia in the Big East Conference. They play the Mountaineers December 3rd. And oh, by the way, DeMarco, you are our favorite Husky. <laughs> I love Goldie. Yeah, right. Sometimes you just got to let the big dog eat, and you are the big dog. Here is Standback. Rolling around, scrambling, giving himself time. And now he'll throw. Shot for third, first down, 42 of the Cougars. Making plays. What a play by Isaiah Standback. Incredible. Hit, the look in his eye is so much different than the first half. Watch this. Play action fake. Breaks down the watch. He tucks the football like a running back. Now pulls it right back out. Turns back into a quarterback. Hits Sonny Shackelford in stride right on the money. Let me tell you, Standback is going to be some kind of player next, next football season. 
He will be a senior next year. They give the ball to Chris Singleton. And Singleton in for James Sims, who's taken out because of a knee problem that he suffered here in the fourth quarter. Now getting some time. And you don't see that much. With most runner gunner quarterbacks, when they tuck the football, it's all or nothing. They're going for the goal line. They're a running back now. Isaiah Stanbeck able to pull the ball out, transition back into the quarterback and throw a strike down the football field. What an athlete. Second down and nine. Singleton again knocked down after a short game. Let's go down to Carroll. I have an injury update now on running back James Sims for the Huskies. He ended up taking a really bad hit to the back of his right knee. It's quite bruised. It's a little bit tight. They put a sleeve on it. They taped up his ankle. He is dying to get back in the ball game, but right now his return is questionable. Steve. And Kara, he's so important to the team. Again, he was averaging 131 yards rushing per game. His last three against Arizona State, Oregon State, and Arizona. It is third down and five. And Singleton in his place, the lone setback by Stanback. They have three receivers on the right side, but all tight. Stanback looking to the right, fires, and it is incomplete, broken up. So I think they're going to punt it because if you're going for it, a field goal, it's a long field goal, and then you give Washington State a shorter field with to work with. Stanback dropping back the pass, tries to fit it in between two defenders. Scott Davis doing a great job getting his hands on the football, not being full. Scott Davis is having a pretty good day for the Cougars. He's been their mainstay. Douglas gets it off, hangs it up. Harvey will let it go, and it will go into the end zone. Chasing it was Russo, but he was unable to get a hand on it. So the Cougars have now 80 yards to go, and Willingham was hoping that ball would be punted just inside. Well, here's a tri Aflac trivia question and answer now. What is the longest Cougars win streak, DeMarco, in the 97 game series history? You said you knew. You want me to answer it? No. Yes. No, go ahead. I'm with the fans answer. Go ahead. No, no, you got no, to answer. answer it. Nope. I'm okay. Not do it. And the answer is two games. I knew that. Well, Bill Dopa trying to make it back to back victories. One last year, 28 25. Tie that mark for the victory. They need an 80 yard drive here with five and a half left. Harrison through and Jerome up near the 25 yard line. From very close to a 200 yard game. I think he may have just uh, nailed it right there. That extends Washington State's record to five 200 yard games, four of them this year. Jerome Harrison, 33 carries. 200 yards rushing in this game, but the Cougars are down by three with five minutes remaining. Hill makes the catch, but just a short two yard gain, and there is a flag down. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. Another hold by the Cougars. Husky's doing a great job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Really putting it to the offensive line of the Cougars. Like I said, if you're the guy you're blocking winds up beating you, you'll do anything you can to prevent a sack, and every now and then you'll get caught with it. 73 offense. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Washington State has had their trouble in the fourth quarter this year. We told you five of their seven losses are by four or fewer points. And remember, they had a two touchdown lead and 638 yards total offense and lost to Oregon State. They blew a 21 point lead against UCLA. Well, you'd have to think the Cougars are going to have to take a shot down the field. They're going to have to get some yards in a hurry to get to stay in this football game. And try to set up a field goal attempt if not score it is second down 16 yards to go Washington brings five on the rush Brink flings it out to Harrison Harrison down the sideline and now is out of bounds near the 22 or 23 yard line so it'll be third down and about eight 
maybe seven. Alex Brink was now thrown for 224 yards, but he threw a touchdown pass on the very first drive of the game. And he is looking for his second since. Huskies go to their nickel package, bringing in Chris Stevens to rush the passer. Bottom of your screen, all 220 pounds of them. Boyd for the first down to the 35 yard line. Boy, they got to Cody a lot on big third down plays. Boy, he has been a weapon for them. When you keep two safeties covering the receivers out to the flats, your one on one is on your tight end. And Cody Boyd doing a great job of defeating his man and getting open. Brink finds him for the first down. That was his fourth catch for 57 yards. Three of those catches have been on third down. Here's Harrison, over 200 yards rushing. Gains about three, four now. Four minutes remaining. Does this guy ever get tired? 34 carries now in the game. Well, he looks like he's tired and maybe I think did he some heard damage you. to his leg. I think he heard you. He's had a great day up until this point, and this is huge. For the Cougars, three minutes, 52 seconds to go. More than enough time for Harrison to work the ball down the field, getting into field goal range or possibly scoring himself. Now your best weapon's coming off the field. Coach Doba going out to check on. He wants to know right now, what's the status of my star running back? It'll change your whole game plan if you're Bill Doba. You can't run the football. You might have to go to an air attack, which puts pressure on your quarterback. And the Cougars trying to beat Washington in back to back games for the first time since 1982 83. Brink now, he's the main man along with Jason Hill at the bottom of your screen. They haven't gone to Hill much lately. They have really ruled that defense playing zone almost the entire game. And there's the toss to Hill. And Hill can't hold on, but they bumped him. And there may have been a holding against Washington. Looks like he may have grabbed the jersey. Matt Fontaine locked one on one with Jason Hill. Jason Hill gives him a little stutter go move. Matthew Fontaine bites on it, sticks out the hand and grabs the jersey. And anytime you see the jersey come away from the pads, it's an automatic call for the official. He came in with a brilliant season. Now five catches for 49 yards. This obviously not a catch, but 62 catches on the year. The hold had already happened. Matthew Fontaine making a play on the football. But Jason Hill already doing the damage with the double move. This is Harrison back in the game. He was not very long as he gained seven, eight yards on this carry. Meantime, Lauren Langley, who missed from 27 yards out, we told you he can't be hanging his head because he may be leap needed later in the game to tie or win it. Right now, 3.15 left. <laughs> Wrapped up. Scott White all over the play. Scott White showing up. He's got five and a half tackles for loss. Knows how to get up the field. Watch him shoot. Here he comes. Defeats the block. Comes in and makes a great play on Harrison. Let me tell you, folks, that's not an easy thing to do. Tackle Jerome Harrison one on one in the open field. Alex Brink has Cody Boyd, who's gone to a big third down plays, off in the right side. Jason Hill alone on the left. Brink back, looking for Boyd, and Boyd has it. First down, 41-yard line. Boy, he's having one of the best games of his career. And that is it. That was his fifth catch. Fifth catch of the game, and that ties his career high at five against USC as a freshman. This time they put C.J. Wallace on Boyd. 
trying to put a better athlete on the tight end. He runs the same route that beat Scott White, beat C.J. Wallace for the first down. Boy, I tell you, Boyd's really showing up today. Brink steps up. Now he'll run. Doesn't get much. Leans forward to the 39-yard line. And when you consider Washington State's future, they've got like four offensive linemen coming back. They're tight end Boyd coming back. Hill could come back. They'll lose Harrison. Brink will be a junior next year. Washington State really could be strong next year. Again, the Huskies running the game. They try to run with Grace and Gunheim and Manasseh. Oh boy, Brink does a great job of pulling the ball down and splitting the game and getting positive yardage. A minute 30 left. Harvey down the sideline. Look at this. He's gone. by Langley is through and the lead is four for Washington State. They have reclaimed the lead and Alex Brink hitting Trandon Harvey just trying to get the first down but a great block and Harvey home free. Bubble screen in the slot. Watch Brink guns it out right now. Now Matthew Fontaine's got to make this play. It's his man in coverage. The X receiver the receiver on the line of scrimmage comes up cuts the corner. Gets him on the ground. There's no one left if the slot defender can't make the play. Runs it in for the go-ahead touchdown. Bill Doba has seen so many late-game losses this year. He wants a late-game victory, and he would really love to have one in the Apple Cup against the cross-state rivals Washington. Brink with a touchdown pass on the first drive of the game. He hopes to have the winning touchdown pass on his final drive of the game. Kick off, short kick. Lewis bringing it back. Lewis to the 30-yard line. Our college football quadruple header continues after our game with 10th ranked Oregon taking on Oregon State and then 16th ranked Fresno State looks to upset number one ranked USC. Our college football coverage continues all day right here on FSN. You want to see that OSU Oregon game. The Ducks without Kellen Clemens could go 10 and 1. Should they be one of the eight BCS teams? I think so. I think so. That their only loss coming to USC, and that's and that's they were up, they loss. were up 14 in the game. Had a shot to win the game, or were playing well, and then USC just kind of took over second half. Do what they do. 114 left. Stand back in trouble. Escapes left from behind. Braidwood pulls him down. No gain. And the clock ticking. Did they take time here? No, they're going to stay up. They have two timeouts left. Using a lot of time, though, here. Again, Braidwood from the side. Stand back deep. Incomplete at the 22. Third and 10 with 41 seconds left. Isaiah Stanbeck trying to call plays from the line of scrimmage. They missed Adam Braidwood, comes scot free and into the face of Stanbeck, tries to muscle it down. Lucky it wasn't intercepted. DeMarco, you still have two timeouts left. You only need, you need 10. You need 10 for the first down. What's your play call? Well, if I'm Tyrone Willingham, I'm definitely going to get Isaiah Stanbeck on the move and try to hit a. Receiver coming across the middle. Give levels. A short intermediate route. Maurice looked to the right side. Stand back. Knock down fourth and ten. Cougars defense stepping up. Oh. 
Well, our defensive player of the game is Evan Benjamin. Look at that. 14 tackles, two for loss. He was the Pac-10 defensive player of the week for a stunning performance last week against Arizona. But right now, it's his offense that he needs. Jerome Harrison, offensive player of the game, with 207 yards rushing. Stand back, fourth and ten. Downfield he goes. Incomplete, and the Cougars have it. Stan Beck trying to do everything he can to make a play. Looks like he may have had Robert Lewis open, broke off the route. A little too late. You watch him. Tries to gun it deep. Get it up and make the play just a little too wide. And the celebration beginning on the sideline. While the understanding of what has taken place. Humbling the Washington Huskies. But a tremendous play by Alex Brink to Trandon Harvey has given Washington State the opportunity to gain their first conference win of the year. And Jerome Harrison, the offensive player of the game and our overall player of the game, brought to you by Kiyosar with 207 yards rushing. And how about this? For Jerome Harrison, he now has 1,900 yards rushing this year. Wow. 1,900 yards rushing, a senior playing in his final game. And it will be a victory for the Cougars over the Washington Huskies. And the Cougars having won only one time in the last 20 years at Husky Stadium. That came in 97, 41 35. Bill Dover with hugs all around. Brent to the knee. And uh, that will just about do it. It does. And the Cougars will end the year four and seven. One win in conference play. Tyrone Willingham will head towards next year with a record of two and nine. And one and seven in conference play as the Cougars win the Apple Cup. And back to back seasons for the first time since 1982 83. Well, you hate to see this at the very end. And that's why Bill Dova, Tyrone Willingham got right in there and separated some guys. A lot of guys are just breaking it up, but the celebration is continuing here. DeMarco, this is something you hate to see because these are two proud football schools. A lot of emotion in this game. It's a big win for Washington State. They deserved it. It's always going to be tough when the crowd rushes the field. If you're Tyrone Willingham, you want to get your guys out and move on and get ready for next season. Well, a terrific game here in Seattle at Husky Stadium. Washington State beats Washington 26 to 22. So for DeMarco Farr and Kara Capuano, I'm Steve Fiziak saying so long from Husky Stadium where the final score was the Cougars 26, the Huskies 22. Just a reminder, it's a triple header Saturday of Pac-10 football here on FSN. And after a short timeout, we'll send you to Austin Stadium as Oregon State battles Oregon in the Civil War. Thanks again for watching. Good night, everyone.